Good morning. Hi, I'm in Costa Rica. <laughs> it's no secret that I want you to quit your job. It's no secret that I want you to take a significant time of your adult life where you don't work. Uh, it's no secret I want you to take a sabbatical, a career break, a gap year. So today we're just going to recap, recount, retell some of the stories of my year off. I quit my job in 2015 to travel for a year on savings. So we're going to talk about what that did for me, to me, in me, through me. Okay, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about some resources to help you take a career break, a sabbatical, a gap year. And many a mini retirement, even if you don't think right now that it's possible for you. Okay, that's what we're going to cover today. Good morning, friends. Good morning. All right, let's see if I can get my um, thing working today. Hi, guys. How's everyone? Happy November. Can y'all believe that? <laughs> that was my that was my um, my entire gap year was spent taking selfies. You're about to see, because I think I'm going to get to show you a bunch of pictures during the <laughs> during this. Good morning, Mom. Let's see. My mom. Oh, it's 72 degrees in exotic Dover, Delaware today. That's good. Enjoy the sun, Mom. Enjoy it. Good morning, Southern Rose Tia D. Good morning, friends. All right, so my, my, com my comments are back to acting janky. Okay. Good morning, Artavia. Good morning. Um, it's going to go real slow. Good morning, Caddy Wagon. Good morning, Kay. Good morning, Profess LCH. Good morning, Latasha. Hey, Halisi. Good morning, Halisi from Our Black Utopia. Looking forward to this. I don't know how seven months of not working has changed me yet. Yes. Yeah. It's all retros it, with, that, with retrospect, right? You always have to look back on things to, to get a full picture. That's right. Um, gosh, it's 2022. Uh, so I'm seven years out. Oh, that's right, because we ce celebrated my seven-year job quit anniversary. So, like, I'm seven years out. I can see the difference in me. All right. Good morning, friends. I'm sorry. I can't do my usual scroll through your comments. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. But that's what I would like to talk about. I would like to... I did a video not too long ago, maybe like six months ago. I don't know. In, in the summer. I did a video over the summer about the lessons that I learned from interviewing 30 plus black women who have taken a sabbatical, right? I've interviewed over 30 black women who've quit their jobs on purpose or who've, who've stayed out of work at least. If, even if they didn't quit on purpose, even if they were laid off, terminated, whatever, went on disability. I interviewed 30 women who have stayed there, <laughs> stayed in that place for a while to, uh, to enjoy some free time in their adult years. In their good, in their in their in the good years, right? So uh, I did talk about that. That video was sometime in June. Um, I did talk about um, lessons from them, but it's been a while since we've talked about my own gap year. We've been talking about other things lately, house sitting and YouTubing and other things. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I love compliments. I'm always find the compliments in the chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm feeling good. So yes, I was sick. Okay, but don't feel too bad for me. I give myself um, periodically, I give myself food poisoning because I will eat stuff that other people will have thrown, would have thrown away. So I ate something that should have been thrown in the trash. And I was down for the count, y'all. I was down. I got off last week's live stream, uh, did a, met up with the Patreon community, did the co-working session. During the co-working session, I started to feel like, like a little Energizer toy whose battery was running down. I was like, I got to go. I couldn't even finish the co-working session, right? We do 25 minutes of work, five minutes of break and chat, chit chat. 25 minutes of work, 10 minutes of break and chit chat, 25 minutes of work, five minutes, right? I couldn't even do the last five minute Pomodoro session. I was like, I got to go. Bye, y'all. Uh, I thought I was just tired. So I took a nap, which is, you know, usually cures a lot of things. And child, I woke up sick as sick could be. So on top of that, I had a little tiny bit of allergy. So I was already coughing and sneezing and watery eyes. And then I gave myself food poisoning. So I'm fine. All that to say, don't don't feel, don't get too worried. If I tell you I have stomach problems, I did it to myself. Okay. <laughs> I did it to myself. This is what I do. <laughs> it's, a, it's a common thing. Probably twice a year, twice a year. I do that. Okay. <laughs> but I can't, th I can't, if it's in the refrigerator, I'm going to eat it. And so that's it. <laughs> I can't. I Listen, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish it. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Connie Perry is the thing that Connie Perry gets like literally the most upset with me about. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I'm gonna finish it, okay? I don't see why you can't get six days out of this thing. I don't, why can't I get six days? Six, I'm not talking about three weeks, right? I'm talking about six days. I'm gonna keep finish. I'm gonna keep on it until it's gone. Uh, and that is, <laughs> sometimes it's painful. <laughs> That's why I need a housekeeper. I need a housekeeper to come in and just throw stuff out for me. Because if it's in there, I promise you, I'm just gonna eat it, right? I might smell it. But I don't have a good, I don't have much of a sense of smell. I've never, it's not a COVID thing. I've never had a sense of smell, like very good. So well, that's not going to help. <laughs> okay, let's get on topic. Let's get on topic. Okay, good morning, guys. Good morning. Okay, so let's get to it. I want to show you some pictures from my sabbatical. Uh, let's see how this goes. All right. So in uh, September 2015, I decided to get on a plane <laughs> and I got off of the plane in Tokyo, Japan. It was my first um, time in Japan, of course, that was just a layover. And then I headed to Malaysia. I don't know if I have a picture of Malaysia. All right, I thought I would organize them and then I just gave up on organizing them. This is a little bit Malaysia. All right, then I bopped over to Malaysia. It was hot, it was humid. Food was delicious, but it wasn't for me. So then Thailand, I spent a significant amount of time in Thailand, uh, by, uh, like two or three months, okay. Out of the year, I spent two or three months in Thailand. You should not ride elephants, it's cruel. Uh, I went on the elephant tour that said that we were not riding the elephants, but then when it was time to take pictures, they were like, anybody wanna get on the elephant, right? Uh, so whatever, I thought I was doing the responsible thing and it still ended up not being a super responsible thing. But um, anyway, I did spend a significant amount of time um, in Thailand. Let's see, can you see much of this picture? I don't know, right? We bathed elephants on a tour. Um, I ate amazing food. In Thailand, I learned how to say aroi, which is delicious, which really got me far. That got me really far um, in terms of like women in restaurants and stuff just being extra nice to me. Um, then I headed to the Philippines. Let me show you a picture of the Philippines. Oh, let me show you the picture of the Philippines. Do I have that picture here? I have a photo of myself that I sell as a stock photo. Uh, so you may have seen this on the internet, but that's your girl, right? This was in the Philippines. Uh, here's another picture to prove that this is really me. Where am I at? I have more. This is the, the... <laughs> it's the back shot, <laughs> right? I got back shots. Uh, so this is uh, in the Philippines where the people are amazing, the, the best people, right? The, the best people. They were very good to me. Um, not the best eating experience. I didn't have the best food experience in the Philippines. Uh, lots of, there's a lot, a lot of fast food in the Philippines. Uh, Thailand, Mal Indonesia, Philippines. Vietnam, okay? And then I bopped over to Viet. Oh, but I got a whole bunch of Philippines pictures. I don't know how much of this you can see. Let's see. This is me and Claire from the Netherlands. I guess it's okay to say her name on the internet. Uh, this In this photo, we were, this all of these photos were with Claire. Claire and I spent probably three weeks bopping around the Philippines together, and then we met up again later in Vietnam, which is a thing that I'll talk about when I talk about how my year of travel changed me. Um, so that was, um, this is El Nido, and in uh, on Palawan in the Philippines um, but then I went over to Vietnam let me get you a good Vietnam picture I'm not going to spend the whole time going over photos I just want to show you a quick glimpse of a few different places in Vietnam day jam day jammas let's see let's see let's delete can I remove things I really don't know delete exit exit Exit, exit. Y'all don't want to hear me say exit for 10 minutes, but I oh, don't know, girl. Um, so Vietnam, where I had a bunch of dayjamas made. Uh, Vietnam, also amazing place, one of my favorite places, one of the, the favorite, my favorite countries that I've visited, but that would not want to live, right? place where you can't, you know, it's not free. It's a communist country. But I had an amazing time visiting Vietnam. 
Um, and then Cambodia, where I just turned out. Oh, so Cambodia, um, at the time, let you do things that probably should not have been done. So Cambodia lets you visit Angkor Wat, the temple system, uh, which I really can't remember how old this temple system is. Uh, and they let, I just stomped all over that place. Again, in retrospect, I probably would not have done so much, right? But at the time, this was legal and done, like do a, done by everyone. la di dadi everybody who went to Angkor Wat did these things. Um, there you go, right? This is another, this one looks really spooky, but it was just a nice picture. They, they, it was just me posing, right? And then the, I don't know, he just happened to walk into my shot. Um, so it looks kind of creepy, but it's not creepy. <laughs> it doesn't give me creepy memories. Uh, and then Cambodia. Oh, then I dipped down to Australia. I don't know if I had, let's see, this is Sydney, Australia, but I was really in the other part of Australia, which I can't re really remember the name of right now. Uh, Y'all know. Uh, anyway, oh, one more Angkor Wat photo just because I forgot to show it to you. Spoiler alert, one of the things that I learned during my sabbatical is that I really like taking pictures. <laughs> I wouldn't say photography is a thing that I like, but I really like taking pictures. Uh, after that, I'm trying to find an Australia picture to show you. I may not find one quickly. I don't see one right now. Oh, that was Australia. I did show you one Australia, but I just wasn't in it. Uh, then I dipped over to Indonesia. I have a ton of Indonesia photos. Let's see. You, I've shown some of these before when I went to the family's compound because I thought it was a public space and they just let me take pictures. They were like, fine, do what you got to do. All right. We understand. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Um, I dipped over to Europe after that. I stopped through uh, Serbia. Uh, there was an amazing flight deal. I don't know. I lost that picture. Stopped through Serbia and went to Budapest, which I don't think I pulled any pictures of for today. Uh, I went to Portugal, my love of my life, and uh, France. I don't, I feel like I may have missed some places, but it's all good. Portugal and France. My picture of France has my cousin Marcy. I didn't ask her if it was okay. And then I just said her name out loud. Oh, well, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm showing it. <laughs> and then I went to France where Marcy uh, joined me. She went. She was visiting some friends in Europe as well. All right. So that was my 12 country, 12 month career break. OK, y'all still here? Are y'all still with me? I did pull up a picture of South Africa, even though South Africa wasn't on that in that 12 months I went I went back home after my career break and then decided that I wasn't done so then I dipped over to South Africa as well so I have a couple of pictures from South Africa let me put them up on here real quick this is a national park in something highlands I can't remember what the highlands were called I'm sorry something something highlands uh, and then this is just a sunflower farm that I saw on the side of the road I decided to pull over in and just twirl <laughs> sometimes you just have, have to twirl and uh, the winery tour this is South Africa all right so these are uh, my that's my 12 country 12 month sabbatical um, in pictures all right so I thought that I would just talk to you about what changed what you don't see is the before, right? Because of course, even the first pictures that I showed you in Thailand, I look pretty chill, right? I'm laying down next to an, or sitting down next to an elephant. I look pretty, pretty chill, but what you don't see is who I was before that sabbatical. Um, I was a person who, I always joke about this. I was a person who just didn't finish things. I started things and didn't finish them. Uh, and planning for that sabbatical was one of the things that I look back on and say, I can do something that's going to take a lot of time. I can see a project from start to finish because I took that sabbatical, not only because I took the sabbatical but in, in 2015, but because I saved up the money for it, 
right? I got the idea for it July of 2014. I left September of 2015, and it took me that long to get my money together. It took me 15 months to save my $14,000 to go. Uh, so even before I left on the sabbatical, what I learned or what changed was that I saw myself seeing a project from start to finish. That saving of that $14,000 was significant because I made $22 an hour in the hospital pharmacy. Um, and I work night shift. I don't like to cook. I don't like to cook, right? Like, And so saving that money meant that I had to work extra hours in the pharmacy on night shift. Because uh, probably half the money, not probably, half of that $14,000 came from just from me uh, working extra at that job, treating it like a part-time job, you know. Um, um, but a, lot, a good portion of it came from me doing things like cooking my own food, packing, cooking food for lunch and dinner at work, packing it and taking it with me, like... I didn't enjoy that. I didn't enjoy that. And I'm usually a person who's like, I don't like it. I don't do it. But I could see the bigger picture, right? That $14,000 goal. Uh, every time I packed my lunch, right? This is like another half a day in Vietnam, right? If Vietnam is going to cost you $30 a day, if the, if the difference between me buying lunch and lunch, usually I buy two meals, right? I would stop at Wawa and buy, actually I'd buy breakfast and lunch. Anyway, uh, right. If the difference is $15 a day between me making my food and packing my food, um, that $15 is, you know, that's a, a half a day in Vietnam. Easy. Because I, st I stayed in some, I think I stayed in some $7 per night accommodations in Vietnam. I'm pretty sure. Right? So it, I had the goal that helped me do the things that I didn't like doing. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't do stuff that I don't like doing but I did that. <laughs> so the first thing that I learned was that I could see a project through to the end. Um, that was significant and it's something that I call back on a lot. I draw back on that a lot when, I'm, when I start thinking about doing hard things, doing things that are a challenge or difficult. <laughs> Like y'all know what I'm about to say, like writing this book, right? <laughs> I've done things before that were hard and that required me to be dedicated to it every day, right? Because one splurge, one splurge could really have set me back on schedule, especially when I bought the plane ticket. Once I bought the plane ticket, right? Like I need this money before I get on this plane. And one big, you know, go out and buy, you know, a purse and a pair of shoes. That's <laughs> That could easily have been two weeks of travel time, right? Two weeks of travel that I couldn't have because I got off track for, you know, a couple of hours in the mall. So it just helped me to, re it helps me to remember that I can do things and I can do things um, every day towards a goal, which is something I need to call back on per right now personally. Hi, teach, create, reveal. Have you always not liked cooking? Always. I've never enjoyed it. I've never enjoyed it. Um, my, my dad's family is, they're good bake, good cooks and bakers. My dad's family are good bakers. So there was a period of time when I did enjoy baking. Oh my gosh. I used to make this, I don't tell you, I used to make this caramel nut braid bread, right? You, you, right. You lay out some dough, you put the, uh, nuts and brown sugar and butter in, and vanilla and whatever inside the dough. And then you roll it up. Right. So you have ropes, three ropes. You braid those three ropes together and you bake that in the right. So there was a time when I did enjoy baking, but I've never enjoyed cooking, cooking. I've never enjoyed having to cook my own food. I'm, it's not my thing. I do. I still cook breakfast because I like breakfast enough to cook it. <laughs> but as we've discussed already, if I cook something, I feel obligated to eat it until it's gone. Being a person who's mostly lived alone. It's not, it's never been for me. That's never been my ministry. I've never been a person who was into it, right? Just not into it. But I, I have like baking at different times. Yeah. So I don't, I don't do it, right? But I did it for that period of time. Got my little crock pot together. Got my little smoothie machine, whatever it was called. The little bullet, the little bullet. So I could make my own smoothie. So I wasn't buying that stuff and throwing money down the drain. 
so I think the first lesson from my sabbatical happened before I even left. The first lesson is that I can see a difficult project through until the end, even while experiencing joy. Because even during that time period, we went on vacation. I, w I went on vacation to L.A. with my mom and dad. Um, right, I did things. We still, my, my um, co-workers, we used to go to happy hour, but we worked night shift. So happy hour for us was breakfast at Bob Evans and we would bring our own vodka. That was our happy hour. I still went, right? I just had a budget and I had a frequency, right? I can only go so often. They didn't go all the time anyway, because we were tired. We didn't go very often anyway. Um, but I still lived. It's not like I am never going to advocate for putting off all the good things in life for some arbitrary magical date. That's never going to be my message to you, to me, to nobody. Uh, so I still did good things. I just found a way to do the good things while still working towards this goal actively. All right, so that was the first thing that I learned. Number two, so I showed you the picture of Claire in the comments. I learned how to talk to new people. So I've always been a talker. Yeah, I've always been a talker, but I've never, I have not always been a person who would talk to people. I don't know how to explain that. Uh, yeah, I have not always been a person who liked talking to people. I don't know, but I've always been a talker. I don't know if that really makes sense. <laughs> I'm trying to find an example. I can't really think of an example. People always had to pull me in. Right. I was never going to be the, the I'm an introvert. I was never going to be the person who reached out to other people. I did. I did a whole video about 24 black women who basically pulled me into their circles at various times when I was new or struggling or whatever. Um, but that's all that's always been the pattern in my life. Uh, but during the sabbatical, I learned just to reach out to people, talk to people. I stayed in hostels a good part of the time. I was 41 when I left. And I had a strict budget, as you heard, $14,000 for one year is $12,000 a month. I mean, $1,200 a month, right? So I stayed in hostels a lot of the time. And I learned to just reach out to people, you know, hey, where y'all going today? Or when people reach out to me, I think my camera might need a little cleaning here. Or when people reached out to me, hey, we're going to such and such a place. Do you want to come? Saying, okay, I'll go. Even though I am a, a homer, homer, a loner, and a hermit. I am a loner and a hermit, and I like that about me. I don't really want to change that too much. I want to change it a little bit, but not too much. I'm a loner and a hermit, but I learn to enjoy other people <laughs> more than in the United States, especially these white, look, these white people. Uh, out in the world, there's a, difference between, there's a difference between white Americans and other white people. Uh, white Americans are just convinced that it's their responsibility to police black and brown people, right? And other people, they don't really care about what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't those traits in other people, but it's, ne it's nowhere near, nowhere near what you're going to find uh, in the United States. So like Claire, the one I met, the picture from the waterfall, uh, we were in a different part of Actually, this picture is in the Philippines, and Claire and I actually met in Thailand. Let me show you this picture again. So I was, um, doot, doot, doot. I was standing outside of a hostel that I had just gotten to, and I was staying in a dorm room with women, but I was outside, outside of the front door. I just gotten there and it was in a town called, called Ayutthaya, Thailand, which we had some, you could just drive, ride a bicycle up to like temples that were from like the year, I don't know, 700 or something. I don't know. Right. You, it was just an amazing thing just everywhere. Ayutthaya just had, you could just, I don't really know how to explain it. I think I might have a picture of that here. Uh, anyway. And so I was, um, Let's see if I have an Ayutthaya picture. I was just standing outside. I don't know if I was, you know, just looking around or what, standing right outside of the hostel. Claire marches by me. She's Dutch. She marched by me with some other women. And she said, we're going to the market to eat dinner. Do you want to come with us? And I said, sure. And I just fell in line with them. And then I realized she didn't know any of them girls. I don't think I have my Ayutthaya picture up here. She didn't know any of them girls. She, she had done the same thing. She had gathered an entire troop of people one at a time just by saying, I'm going here. Are you coming? <laughs> right. Um, and so 
I met Claire, uh, we went to the next, we went to El Nido, this place together. We stayed in a hostel that was, actually, I think I got there before her. Our schedules didn't coincide. I got there before her, but I told her where I was going. We stayed in a hostel that was kind of a farm, it had chickens and roosters. Uh, I stayed in a, in a cabin with a couple, and I didn't realize it. It was a women's room, but the women were a couple, and I was super uncomfortable. I'm like, y'all should have a private room, right? Y'all shouldn't be like, I don't know. So I was like, get a, if you're a couple, you should have a private room. I don't care if it's a women's only room. You should have a private room. Same with, even in mixed dorms, right? In, in a mixed dorm, one time in, when Marcy and I stayed in Paris, we stayed in a hostel, and there was a couple in the hostel. And I'm like, just get a private room. Why are y'all sharing this bed? It's weird. I, I think it's weird. Anyway, so anyway, I'm off track. Claire, uh, we bopped around for weeks. <laughs> we bopped around for weeks. So this was Thailand. This We met in the Philippines. We met again in Vietnam for New Year's Eve for the fireworks, but we crossed paths. So we never hung out we never, we didn't get to see the fireworks together. And then I just saw Claire in, in uh, Curacao. I didn't put a picture of that up either. I just saw her again in Curacao um, as a loner and a person who normally has to have someone pull her into their sphere. Uh, during my sabbatical, I learned to make my own, <laughs> make my own sphere, right? Pull people into my thing. Um, so that was nice. Um, Sashana, a lot of y'all are ambiverts. Listen, I took the test. Don't tell me, okay? <laughs> tell the test people. Some, I think, I think a lot of y'all confuse introvert with uh, shy or socially awkward. I'm not socially awkward, I'm, I, in any more than the average person, right? I'm not shy. I'm just introverted. I live in my, I listen, I live in my head. I live in my world. You don't even know. Y'all don't even know. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nubianette. Hi, Nubianette. I love hostels. I always incorporate a hostel stay in my travels. I have two lifelong friends I've made at a hostel. Once we stayed in the same room, the other we met at the hostel bar. Yeah. It's, um, it seems different to us, to Americans, because it's just not an American thing. But around the rest of the world, they do that. That's just what they do. I've stayed in hostels in the Philippines. I stayed in a beautiful hostel. Oh, my gosh. And there was like probably a four-generation family. Grandparent, parent, kids. No, three generation, Three generations of a family staying in a hostel. Uh, and in that break, that hostel had real pancakes for breakfast and real syrup. And out of out of the U.S., you're not really going to get a whole lot of real syrup at breakfast, real maple syrup. But I was like in love with that hostel in the in in El Nido. Uh, yeah, it's a place where at breakfast you just turn to your neighbor and say, "What you doing today?" Or what did you even what did you do yesterday that I should not miss? Right. Boom, friends, right? <laughs> or at least boom, somebody to spend the day with so you don't feel sad and lonely on Thanksgiving or whatever, you know? Um, yeah, so. It's, it, the hostels were a wonderful way for me to break out of my, I don't talk to strangers, I don't trust strangers um, shell. You when, when Rashida and I interviewed the women for the 12 Days of Career Breaks videos and JC said she started to realize how much of herself was not really herself, just an armor that she had put on, a personality that she had put on to survive her environment. I was like, ah, I'll never forget that. <laughs> a lot of my things, traits that I thought were me were just things that I... Trauma responses, right? I grew up around white people in Ohio. They were not good people. They are not good people. And they didn't treat me well. And so I learned to put up that armor or be, be a different person in response to those traumas, plural, that uh, I didn't need when I left the United States. And so I let them go. I really let them go. And I got to have a good time and meet people and have make friends. So the Philippines, it, all on its own, that experience at that one hostel in the Philippines changed everything for me. Um, the hostel manager was probably like a 21 year old Philipp dude from the Philippines um, who had gone to school for hospitality, right? And he just was like, 
a combina combination hostel manager and like tour guide and friend and good intro to the Philippines or to that island anyway, to Palawan. And he had a friend named Raphael who was just out of his mind. I don't know. How hard would it be to show? I don't know. I shouldn't show you their pictures. The picture that... So anyway, so they took us to that waterfall. They took us, he said, listen, we're going to this waterfall. It's a hike. And I said, I'm going to complain the whole way, but I'm going. And I complained the whole way, but I went, right? So he took us here. Can I put it back up? Okay. So he took us here and I can't tell you, this picture doesn't do the place justice. It was just in the middle of like, just the, the, I don't know. We walked through it. It looked, seemed like we walked through a farm, then we walked through like a forest, and then there it was. Uh, I've never seen ever seen anybody else have a picture of this place, right? <laughs> uh, there's a whole bunch of these these rocks, right? We, so we sat on the rocks and we took pictures. And I said, Raphael, take some pictures of me in the water. And he turned with the camera. And instead of just getting me and Claire in the water, he's they're him taking pictures of me and Claire in the water, right? It's hilarious. The camera roll, hilarious, right? Uh, anyway, it was just a really good barrier breaking down time when I got to see... Um, other people put myself in their hands. I don't know these people. We walk in 40 minutes into the forest. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if I really knew where we were. I guess I knew we were going to a waterfall with to, with, to swim in because I had a swimsuit on. <laughs> right? Because that's my, that's my swim top and my shorts. So I had a swim top on. So we knew we were going there. But I don't remember him giving us much detail. Uh, but I just was like, okay, listen, I'm gonna put myself in your hands. That's it. Uh, strangers all over the world, I've said that strangers all over the world have gone out of their way to be helpful and to make sure that I, just to make sure that I enjoyed their country. Sometimes not even to help me. If I am lost or confused or something, I'll make sure you know it, right? That's why I don't go to dangerous places alone because I don't mind saying, looking like I am totally lost. Let me get my, let me get a piece of paper. Let me get a map. So they can tell that I don't know. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand on the corner doing all of this until somebody comes and helps me. That is a thing that I do now <laughs> because it's worked for me time and time and time again. It's also a thing that I should not do in dangerous places. And again, that's why I haven't been to places with a dangerous reputation because <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I know how to do this. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, Alicia Joan. I want to travel, but I need to lose weight first. Plus, my son is 15 and I'm a single mom. I understand wanting to wait until your son is 15, especially if you can't afford to take him with you. Seriously, seriously. If you can afford to take your son with you on a, on a significant trip, on a, on a sabbatical, on a career break, he's going to benefit from it just like you will right? His world is going to expand just like yours. His barriers are going to come down at least temporarily just like yours will. You'll, he'll meet new people just like you. Uh, but I can understand wanting to do it by yourself also. <laughs> All right. As far as the lose weight thing goes, I don't like to live for some magic number, right? You deserve to live today. I deserve to live today, right? In this size 20 body, I deserve to live today. I deserve to have a good time and feed myself and nourish myself, give myself peace and joy. Um, that living for a future magic number, whether it's a future number on the scale, a future, an age when you're allowed to retire, uh, it's sad. It's, you're really giving yourself the message that you don't deserve it today as you are. I hope you change that. I hope we all change that. I hope we look at the ways that we're putting off the stuff in our lives until some magic number and say, no, I deserve it. I deserve it today, right? Who doesn't deserve time away? Uh, so that's it. I don't know. That's all I have to say about that. That plus like when you travel, weight will just fall off you. <laughs> Whether you try to or not, weight will just fall off of you. <laughs> if you wanna, <laughs> If you want to do it for that reason, who am I to say that's the wrong reason to travel? Yeah, Nicole. Oh, how? Hi. Hi, Donna. But wait, my comments, my comment box is just going bonkers. Okay, Nicole, my daughter is 16 and we're traveling. I put her in homeschool. Yeah, right. Before, before homeschooling, the idea, before the, before the COVID, before 
COVID, uh, the idea of what do I do with my kids if I want to travel for a long time or if I want to move abroad, you know, that was a big question. Now that people have, so many people have homeschooled for such a long time, they're like, Psh, we can do it. <laughs> That's not the concern. Yes, yeah, so, but I can understand on one hand, I can understand wanting to wait until your kid is gone so you can do this for yourself. But on the other hand, take if you can take the kid with you, take him with you. Because man, won't they benefit. Um, I can't remember the last person I... Charisma is probably the last person I interviewed with a child who traveled and is traveling, uh, who traveled long term. Charisma's son, Cam, is middle school, I think. I don't know how old kids be. I want to say... <laughs> I want to say Cam was probably 10 or 12. And uh, they, yeah, they spent a significant amount of time in the Caribbean last year, this year, earlier this year. So if you want to go back and watch my interview with Charisma, do that. You know, I'm not going to be able to pull the link up in any reasonable amount of time, but just look on my channel for Charisma. Something about traveling with special needs, traveling, a fam tra family travel with special needs or something like that. Um, before Charisma, I, yeah, I can't remember before that, but if I haven't, Adelia, who is Picky Girl Travels the World, on her channel, you'll see interviews with women who have traveled with their children, taken a significant break, or even if they're not taking a break from working, they're still working online, but they're working and traveling. Um, you'll see that on, on Adelia's channel as well, on, um, the Black Women Travel Podcast. Wanda interviews women all the time. A lot of them are mothers. So it's done. It's, it's much more common now. So let's go to, the net, to another lesson. I'll cross this one off. Um, that's another lesson that I learned during the sabbatical. When I left on the sabbatical, I thought that um, I, I, I was 41 and I knew I had wanted a family and I thought that that time had passed me by. And so I said, well, I guess I should make lemonade, right, from these lemons. And so I should enjoy things that I wouldn't be able to enjoy if I did have kids right now, right? So that was my thinking when I went into that gap year, when I went into that year of bopping around. I thought I was doing it because to celebrate the person who, you know, wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. But it turns out people out here traveling with small kids, they out here doing it, living, just all nomadic. Yeah, right? So that's the, another thing that I learned, right? That you don't need to be, um, I guess this also goes into magic number living, right? You don't need to be a certain thing to live a certain way. You just make it fit you. If you want it, make it fit you, right? So that was a really, Angela. I see y'all congratulating Angie, but I don't see Angela's comments. Again, I'm on my, um, I'm on Ecamm Live, so I don't see every single comment. My kids are 16 and 17. Yes, yeah, so Angela and her kids, her two youngest kids are, um, and her husband are, and the two dogs <laughs> are out in Mexico just living, right? Left the D.C. area in, in Mexico living their lives with the two high school kids. Uh, yes, thank you, Angela, for hollering, for raising your hand. Angela's channel is Lamar and Angela. I don't, y'all know, I'm not going to be able to find it in a reasonable amount of time. Let's see. I have decent internet here in this house. I don't know if you can tell. It's not the best. It's not like I had in the last house in Costa Rica, but it's decent. YouTube. I can't talk in time. Lamar and Angela. Channel. Copy, Ecamm, comment, paste. Okay, so I put uh, Angela's YouTube channel in the chat. If you're watching the replay, uh, I hope I'll remember to, I'll put it in the, replay, in the description down below. Hello, friends. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I never introduced myself. Okay, hi, welcome. My name is Stephanie Perry. I'm a house sitter. I'm the creator of House Sitter School. I help black women take a sabbatical, bop around as a nomad, move abroad, house sit, 
uh, embrace ease. If these things sound good to you, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Ring that notification bell so that you will be notified when I post a new video or when I go live. Welcome. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry it took so long if you don't know. <laughs> All right. So it's done. Uh, and that was a thing that I didn't learn until my sabbatical. That's a thing that my sabbatical taught me that you just make it work for you. You don't have to say, oh, it didn't fit me. It didn't, it didn't happen for me. And so I can't, whatever. Like I thought that, uh, you couldn't travel if you had small kids, people are out here making it work and love, loving it, enjoying it. Right. There is a thing called a travel nanny. If you can afford a travel nanny, I recommend it. There's a thing called a, tra a person called a travel nanny. Right. If not, right. Just do it. Is there much of a difference between traveling with your kids and living with your kids every day? You still got to feed them. Still got They got to take naps. You got to take naps. Right. You have to have a place to stay. Uh, you got to have stuff to do. I don't know if it's all that much different. You got to school them in some way, educate them in some way. I don't know that it's all, and all that much different, except that you get to be in paradise, maybe, except that you get to boycott winter, maybe, except that you get to expose them to new cultures and new places and new foods and new languages. Uh, so yeah, I learned I learned that you you can do it with kids. I also learned that you can just make things work for yourself. You don't have to say that didn't happen for me, right? That didn't happen. During part of my sabbatical, I was in Australia and I took um, a job as a, not a job. I did a work exchange, a work exchange where I got free room and board in order to take care of their kids in the morning, get their kids up, dressed, ready for school, drive the carpool, pack the lunch, feed them breakfast, Right. That was my responsibility. And it was a nice way to say, like, this I, this didn't happen for me one way. But could it be could it be another way? Right. A way to, like, dip my toes into nanny work. Uh, nanny work is not for me. I learned that <laughs> I learned that nanny work is not for me. That four year old, they were the kids were four and seven. And that four year old was a terror in the mornings. He, was, he had the worst mornings. I didn't know kids could have such bad mornings, right? Uh, she, the mom told me that the last family, the last nan, the last, the last work exchange person left, just up and left. He drove her away. At that point, he had to be three, because when I got there, he was four. Three years old, he drove her away. She was like, no more, <laughs> right? I learned that that's not for me. <laughs> but I also did learn that the mom drive is still there. You know, I got to see like some things that I thought were gone, still ignited, if that makes sense, right? So uh, what was the lesson? How did I write this on my piece of paper? Oh, travel with kids. That was boring. Okay. But I learned that you can bop around the world with kids. But most importantly, I learned that you can just make a plan for yourself that fits yourself. Oh my gosh, Lily. I was like, <laughs> now if I, <laughs> if I throw his breakfast in the trash, I'm the one who's wrong, right? I'm here making him breakfast. I mean, he would just scream in my face in the morning, but at night he wouldn't want to go to bed. He was a night owl. He, he, this, the, our system did not work for him. Matter of fact, he was also, his birthday and my birthday were really close. So he might've been a cancer as well. When, when, when we went to bed, the seven year old went to bed, he went to bed. When the four year old went to bed, he was up and he had to do this and he had to do that. But wait, I forgot to tell you. Oh, right. Go to bed. You have to go to bed because tomorrow you got to get up. Tomorrow when it was time to get up, that kid was the worst, the worst, the worst. One day I told him to shut up and the seven-year-old who understood shut up to be a swear word, right, to be swearing, ran and told the mom. <laughs> and the mom was like, Stephanie, please don't say shut up. But on the other hand, hey, you shut up, <laughs> right? He was just screaming. They had a, a house where they had three bedrooms downstairs. And then they had at least two bedrooms and a bath upstairs. The upstairs was rented out. 
And one of the renters, there was a, a man who was like an Uber driver. He rented one bedroom. And a man who was a student, a uh, PhD student in something like engineering or physics or something. Uh, he was up there, super handsome Iranian dude. Name. I can't remember his name. We're still Facebook friends. Super handsome. I mean, like, why are you in school? <laughs> Handsome men do not need to be smart. And one day the kid was just yelling at me in the morning for breakfast. And I was like, at this point, I'm just going to let him yell at me, right? I'm making my breakfast. I'm making the seven-year-old's breakfast. If the four-year-old doesn't want this for breakfast, the cat will eat it, right? The cat will come and eat these scrambled eggs, right? <laughs> and the dude came downstairs. I thought he was going to pick the kid up and shake him, right? Because he was a workout guy, right? He came running down those steps. And the little boy was like, I said, oh, <laughs> that's all I need to do is scare you. Anyway, I mean, that kid was a terror in the mornings. The rest, he would come home from daycare just as sweet, right? I love you. You're so pretty, right? I mean, he was so sweet. The rest, but in the mornings, I couldn't take it. Anyway, anyway, that was Australia. I was, yes, right? Like, wh why are you in school? I could understand you leaving Iran and coming to Australia to meet you a rich Australian lady or person, per man, woman, person, uh, and get you some cash from them. <laughs> but why are you in school? <laughs> his parents came to visit. in the ha While we were there, while I was there, his parents came from Iran to visit. Mother was beautiful, right? Like, just a family of beautiful people. She could have been the, the queen of Iran, right? Like, I don't, do they have a queen? I don't know. But the king, if they have a king, right? She could have been married to the king. I'm like, y'all are just taking all this, these looks for granted. Why? <laughs> what is the point of looking like that and going to university? What? Like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> all right, yeah, yes. I mean, a totally different person. From the time I dropped him off at Kindy, he was in like a Montessori. But from the time I dropped him off at school to the time I picked him up, he was two different children. If you had told me later that it was two kids and they were pranking you, I, I could believe it. Two different kids. I mean, he just, he was crazy about me during the day after, a, afternoon. <laughs> afternoon. He took one of the best pictures of me I have. Oh, I don't have one of the best pictures in Australia I have. We went to some nature thing and I just gave him my phone. I had to happen to have his bubble wand in my hand. So the picture is kind of messed up. But he just he was like, OK, right here, white heel, white heel. Right. Take my picture. I'm like, Tari, uh, I, whatever your name is, you did a really good job. Right. But first, but from whatever time we woke up, six or seven to nine o'clock. I couldn't stand that kid. I couldn't stand that child. <laughs> and I didn't know, right? That was my first experience with somebody like that. All right? All right. So the kids. Uh, I learned that you don't have to put off the things. Uh, you can just make things work for you. All right? Uh, what else did I? Oh, I, okay. I just wrote you can't. I can travel with kids. Let's take that off the list. I also learned that I'm not a worker. I've never been a person who really been uh, a hard work hustle. I've never been a hard work hustle person. There was a brief period of time when I felt like I needed to like punish myself after I had the miscarriage when I did like only work and did nothing else. But for the most part, work was never my thing. But being able to step away from the United States helped me to see how in the United States we are viewed as workers, period. And how we're not workers, we're actual humans. We're actual people, we're not robots. Uh, and so I never went back to the work culture, right? I did briefly, so after I came back, I, came, I flew back into the United States without enough money to get myself from the airport home. So my parents came and got me from the airport and um, I got a job. I got a job for three months so that I could get up enough money to leave the country again and go to South Africa. Got three months. In those three months, that's that, you know, I was a worker again. But I knew that I had an ex expiration date. This job had an expiration date. I'm not saying that everyone with jobs 
I'm not, this is me, not me being anti, so I am anti-job, but in a different way, right? But I'm not talking about worker in terms of not having a job. I'm talking about being a worker as in that being your identity and your purpose and the center, the sun, the sun in your solar system. In the United States, work is the sun in our solar system. And I got to see people not live like that, right? All over the world, people with money, people without money, um, just living. Work is a thing they do sometimes, <laughs> and then they don't do it sometimes. Uh, but it doesn't dictate what they do in their lives. And that was the end on, of that. I couldn't, I couldn't go back, right? I couldn't go back, right? So I'm not saying that nine to five, I'm not, okay, so if your job helps you live your dreams, if your job helped propels you towards the things that you want in your life and they treat you with respect, give you access to your benefits and stuff without you having to bend over backwards to get them, right? Then a nine to five for some people is, is the way. Uh, it's, it's, for some people, a nine to five is the way. But the United States is just not set up for people with jobs to also thrive. It's just not. It's just not, right? Have you, do you have any friends who've lived and worked in Europe, right? You go to work, sure, but like work is contained within these hours. They don't, they're not calling you at off, off hours and expecting you to have stuff prepared when you come back in. When they're on vacation, they're on vacation. When they're on vacation, everybody's on vacation. Oh, we shut down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No. August? You, you said August? What is August? <laughs> that is not on our work calendar. Our work calendar does not contain the month of August, right? Um, yeah, right. So there, I, I don't like the way jobs treat people, right? But that's not... But there are people who excel in jobs that, that I've heard. I've heard there are people out here whose jobs give give them the skills that they want to acquire. Right. I think you're if your job helps you become the person you want to become. I love that for you. I just have not had that experience. Right. Yeah, I'm not a job basher. I'm a way I'm bashing the way jobs treat people. I had to beg for my vacation time. I don't know about y'all. And the army was probably the easiest place for me to get time off. Now I did get, one of my article 15s was because they wouldn't give me a day off and I just took it. But, um, but it, it was easier to get time off in the army than it was in the civilian world. Like in a hospital where 18 different people work in this pharmacy, I don't know, we probably had 60 people who worked in the pharmacy, honestly. We probably had 60 pharmacy technicians. I couldn't get five days of vacation that I requested months in advance. You know what I'm saying? That's when I talk bad about jobs, that's what I'm talking bad about. <laughs> I'm not talking bad about having jobs. Because I've, like I said, I've heard that there are people whose jobs help them acquire the skills that they want to acquire, um, help them live their dreams, give them adequate time off, encourage a wellness practice in 360 degrees. I've heard these places exist. I just haven't had it. I never had it. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. I remember meeting new people and they asked right away, what do you do? I was like, I'm a unit secretary in a Pete ICU. They wanted to talk about that, not about me. Yeah, that's very American. It's an easy test. Easy test. It's introduce yourself to someone. If they ask you what you do, American. Right? Like, it's the next question. It's the only thing they're interested in. They just want to know how much respect they should give you based on your rung in the money-making ladder. Right? How much money do you make? So how much respect should I give you? That's all they want to know. That's all they're asking. What do you do? How, how, much, how much respect should I give you? If you're in a system where your respect level is based on your job, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong place, right? That's, that's, you're doing it wrong. That's not how human, I don't think we're doing human, humans right. I don't think we're doing human right. I don't think that's the right thing. Uh, but they, people, other people don't ask and they don't care. They don't care. Other people, they don't care. 
I don't know. Right. I always say you meet somebody in a hostel or a hotel bar or whatever. He could be the prime minister <laughs> or he could be the man who sweeps the streets. You won't know. It will probably never come up. It won't come up. Other people don't do that. Right. All them Germans I dated germ while during my I didn't put this in, I didn't put this in here in any way, but. One of the lessons that I learned during the sabbatical is Germans are everywhere. It's not a very big country, but they get out. They be out in the world just living. They get a whole bunch of vacation time, for one, right? And they're encouraged to live a full life. Uh, yeah, and I've been on dates with many a German from Tinder. I don't know what any of them did for a living. Can you imagine going on a date, like an actual legitimate date with somebody, and walking away and not knowing what they did for a living in America? That's how it is. That's how it is. I always say, um, uh, what do you do? If people do ask me now, I just say I do as little as possible. We went to the prices, right? You know, and um, they how they screen everybody in the back before you get into the show. And they asked me what I did. And I said, I worked at keeping up with my laundry. <laughs> that was even before my sabbatical. We went on the prices, right? In 2015 for my mom's birthday. And she, he was like, Stephanie, what do you do? I said, I work at keeping up with my laundry. <laughs> now decide, right? Decide how you're gonna how much respect you're gonna give me. <laughs> yes, right. It's just it's very that's very American. I don't know about Canadian. Canadian friends, do y'all do that? It's hard to tell sometimes who's Canadian until they say certain words. <laughs> so Canadians may do this too, but I don't know. <laughs> right <laughs> and the, on the prices right he was like so you're a housewife I said without a house or a husband or kids <laughs> my dad was like they're not going to pick you <laughs> I said he said so it was the man um, oh, I can't remember his name the man who's always you see him anyway, when they talk about the backstage stuff. Um, <laughs> he was like, I said, uh, I, I'm, I'm Stephanie, I'm from Delaware. I work at keeping up with my laundry. And he was like, so that means you're a housewife? Well, I said, I'm a house, well, I guess housewife. I said, but I don't have a house. Uh, I probably didn't say I don't have a house because I did have a house at that time. But I said, without, I'm, a house, I'm a housewife who's looking for a husband or something like that. I don't have any kids and I'm looking for a husband. And then when they got to the end of the line, there was this little man, little like Ameri Mexican American man. He was probably five two, and he said, "I'm here to get the ladies." And I was like, eh. "I put my, I was like right here." My dad was like, "Put your hands down." <laughs> put your hands down. <laughs> my dad was like, "They're not gonna pick you to be on the show. I know that much." And they sat us in the back. We, as far as I recall, we were way in the back. We were way back there. <laughs> All right. Remember my mom? <laughs> I think my mom felt certain that she was going to get on the prices right. I feel like she felt... My mom, she feels like she can see the future. She's not good at it, though. She's not good at it like me. Uh, and she, I think she may have felt like I ruined her, their chances of getting on the prices right. <laughs> right? Uh, but that's all people want to know. That question is just, I mean, there's no other reason in private or in, in informal settings to ask people what they do for a living except to assess their value. Fruit of the slavery tree, right? That's fruit of the slavery tree. When you have an entire country built on the back of slavery, of enslaved people, you value people based on what they do. Other places don't. They don't, I promise you. Well, there's classism. I'm not saying that there is classism worldwide. But they already know, right? You can, like, you can, you can estimate somebody's class without asking them that question. All right. Yes, right? That's what they're just trying to size you up. Uh, yeah, right. I've opted out of some things, and that's one of the things I've opted out of. That's I've opted out of that conversation. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. 
Sometimes you have to, I guess. I'm not totally, because sometimes you have to. Right, because when I did meetups with women, I did have to ask them what they did when they would talk about, like, oh, sh I wonder if she's updated me lately. One of the women was like, I want to do something different. And I was like, what do you do? And then I was like, oh, have you thought about doing that? But as a freelance writer, right, writing about, that she worked in the sciences. And I was like, have you thought about being a freelance writer in the sciences? That way you can break out of the whatever it was she was doing. So sometimes I do have to ask you what you do. Sorry. <laughs> but know that I'm not asking it. I, I'm only asking because I have to. Because for, uh, seriously, for the most part, I have opted out of that. Yes. All right. So another thing that had changed for me during the sabbatical, I learned to ride a motorbike. <laughs> right? I learned to ride a motorbike. Uh, so in Thailand, you show up, uh, this was 2015, I don't know if things have changed. You show up to a, mo a place, you just show up to a place outside where there's a bunch of motorbikes lined up <laughs> that is renting motorbikes. I would probably say for rent in English. Uh, you hand them your passport and they give you the keys to a motorbike and a helmet. And they don't ask if you know how to ride a motorbike. I was feeling myself <laughs> and figured if I, it's a moped, a moped, which is different from a, from a motorcycle, right? A moped. They look very stable. So I did it. I remember give, getting on the bike putting on my helmet, which is a challenge because I have a very big head. I have a big head and big hair. Squeezing this helmet on my head. He had to give me a second helmet, a bigger helmet, try to find a bigger helmet. I couldn't take the helmet that matched or coordinated with the bike. And then I'm like, okay, let's <laughs> I was like, don't look at him, don't look at him because if you look at him, he's gonna come over and take this bike away from you. And so I just, okay, now I'm renting a motorbike. I've ridden over in the countrysides of Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, the Philippines. I think I rented a motorbike in every single one of those places and just took some time out and just got on a road to see where it went. Right, let's see where this road goes. Let's see if this is a shortcut to a beach or not. Uh, let's ride through this neighborhood. Let's see these kids getting ready for school. I've seen kids all over Asia walking themselves to school, drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> Alicia and I talked about this last week, right? How Coca-Cola is the breakfast of champions for small children all over Southeast Asia. Uh, I just have been able to get on my bike and get on a bike that I rented and see things that I wouldn't have otherwise seen. I've been able to just get away and get my lone, loner hermit time. Um, even when I stayed in a hostel with other people in the room with me, um, I got to get on that bike and just see these places from the ground. And it was wonderful. But learning to ride the motorbike is like a strange, it's a strange after, uh, like a strange result of having taken this thing. It's very dangerous. I'm not saying I would do, I would tell you to do it, okay? It's very dangerous. Driving is very different. I rode a motorbike in Vietnam. Jazzy from Chicago was like, let's leave Hoi An, this small town. Let's get on our motorbikes and let's go to the city of Da Nang. Jazzy and ride goes. I don't even know where we. Oh, I think this picture. This was me and Jazzy. Jazzy took this picture. She's just not in it. Uh, let's leave our small town where you you feel comfortable on a motorbike, even a bicycle. In Hoi An, I felt comfortable on a bicycle. And let's leave here. Let's go to Da Nang, and do stuff. <laughs> uh it was scary, right? It was trafficy. And things don't go the way you think, but it's just a go with the flow place. The, the answer to riding a motorbike in these places just is just go with the flow. Do what they're doing. <laughs> if you need to do something, if you need to like make a turn or something that's different, you need to find somebody and just follow him. Uh, Indonesia, I also wrote, rented a motorbike in Indonesia. In Yogyakarta, 
I got on a bike and rode out to this place at sunrise. And I was moved. Let me show you this. I got on the bike. I don't have good pictures of myself in this place because I had helmet hair. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have good pictures of myself there. But this, I went to this temple in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. I got up early, right? The sun looks high in the sky at this point, but this was sunrise. It, was, it really was sunrise. Uh, and it was foggy. So that was the best, right? The best sun we got. And just walked, walked inside and through these things at this temple uh, while the chants were happening. I don't know what to, the call to prayer, right? Indonesia is a Muslim country. While the call to prayer was happening, and there were lots of other tourists here. I it can tell from this picture that I blurred somebody out right here. There were lots of other tourists here, but there were also local people there for their morning prayer. And it was just a beautiful thing, a lovely thing, because I decided to hop on my bike and see it. I'm not a big fan of tour groups, especially if I think there's gonna be white people in the tour groups. Uh, but I'll jump on a bike and go check things out. Uh, so I learned to ride a motorbike during my, <laughs> a moped type thing, during my career break. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and I had, Indonesia is underrated, so everybody knows Bali, but Indonesia is underrated. Coffee's amazing, right? Coffee's wonderful. The people are very nice, and it's just beautiful and old. <laughs> old and beautiful places are, are nice places to just go in and be still in and watch people. They were automatic. Oh, no. Oh, hey, we tried a manual motorbike in Ibiza and crashed. Oh, no. So this is why, okay, so travel insurance is important because everywhere you go, you see tourists in, in casts, okay? The motorbikes will take you down. <laughs> so important to have travel insurance. But also, like, I looked it up in Thailand, a broken arm, I think was $200, dollars 200 dollars cash, cash to be treated for the broken arm. I remember looking it up and I tried to memorize that number. Um, 200 or 2,000. Might be, I think it was $200 for a broken arm in Thailand. You see lots of people, lots of tourists all scraped up on one side, and right? Lots of motorbike accidents. That's why I prefer to ride my motorbike away from people, <laughs> right? If there's an accident, it's just going to be me. But yeah, I had good travel insurance back then. I had... Um, not that I don't have good travel insurance now, but back then I had World Nomads and you could select the things that you were going to do to make sure that you were covered. So like I was covered for motorbikes for snorkeling, but not for scuba, right? I didn't want to, I wasn't going to scuba anyway, but I didn't want to pay for the scuba coverage. Uh, something else I did. Oh, so I wanted to do some Muay Thai. I thought I was going to go. I really like watching combat sports. And I thought one of the things I would do during the sabbatical was go to a combat sporting event in every country, which I think I did. Uh, and I wanted to take a lesson. I couldn't. I couldn't even work up the nerve in the first country. In Thailand, I could not work up the nerve to do a Muay Thai lesson. And there was a Muay Thai gym right under the hostel. So my hostel was like a, an upstairs place. And right below it was the Muay Thai gym. And I couldn't work up the nerve to go in there. <laughs> so I never did the combat sports thing, but I did watch combat sports anywhere, everywhere. But I had to select on my insurance. Will you be doing this and that? So I got insurance in case I wanted to take some Muay Thai lessons. And still, my insurance for that full year was less than $800 through World Nomads. Now I have a different policy with Alliance. But yeah, it's super dangerous. It's pro that's the most dangerous thing I did. Riding the motorbike is the most dangerous thing I did, right? I snorkeled around the Great Barrier Reef or part of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. I did that waterfall thing. I don't know. But I talked to strangers <laughs> and took their advice on which turns to take and which buses to take. But the most dangerous thing that I did during that sabbatical is um, riding a motorbike. Especially because I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> yes. Especially, yeah, I did, really did not know how to do it. They just give you the keys. Uh, I was just feeling myself and 
figured I had to try it and I didn't have anybody to teach me. In retrospect, I probably just would have learned here, asked somebody to give me lessons here. My dad always rode a motorcycle when I was a kid. My dad always had a motorcycle, probably f until, I don't know. All, he always had a motorcycle, so it didn't seem, I felt oh, I was overconfident is what I was. I was overconfident. But um, I, going, if I had to do it again, I would have just asked somebody to teach me. He didn't have a bike by the time I went, but somebody, he knew somebody who could have taught me something. I have a friend. Yeah, Yvette, I have a friend who in India who was in an accident, resulted in a long hospital stay and rehab. Yes, yeah, it's dangerous. Be, in, be fully insured, and I don't mean just travel insurance, right? I mean medical insurance. That's right. It's dangerous, and I wouldn't, I'm not telling anybody else to do it. I'm just telling you things I learned how to do, right? I learned how to talk to strangers. <laughs> I learned how to be a nanny. I learned how to ride a motorbike. <laughs> moped, moped. Yeah. All right, anything else I learned? Look, where are my lessons at here? I'm not a worker. Oh, I learned that it was really easy for me to adjust to really easy for me to adjust to having a lot less, right? Having a lot fewer things. I left on my sabbatical with a big old suitcase. I don't know how to tell you what it was. I had a, I want to say 70 liter backpack. Does that sound right? And at the last minute, I decided that I wasn't going to use that 70 liter backpack. I'm going to Google it real quick and see how big that is. Yep. I had a 70 liter backpack. And at the last minute, I decided, you know what? I don't want to carry stuff on my back. Let me get a roller bag. But I got the equivalent of that in a roller bag. And I traveled at first with that big old bag and a carry-on size backpack. Or back, you know, a, that big old bag and a backpack. And it was too much. It was too much stuff. It was too much to have to pack and unpack, especially since I was mostly going to the same climate, right? I spent that trip in, I spent most of that time in Southeast Asia with a little dip to Australia and a little dip to Europe. I didn't need a coat or like even real pants. <laughs> I didn't need real pants until I got to Australia more than halfway through. And they have Target in Australia. So I just went and bought myself pants and a jacket at Target, right? I remember that. I still, I still have both of them, as a matter of fact. Um, I had too much stuff. No matter what anybody tells you, you're going to take too much stuff. But don't take anything that you're not okay with just ditching, especially if it's bulky or heavy, right? It was heavy and bulky. You know what I'm going to do? Leave it. I'm leaving it right here. I had some maxi skirts, especially after I left Malaysia in the beginning. I was really concerned about Malaysia, about people not treating me well if I wasn't covered up. So I covered myself up. Malaysia is a Muslim country. So I covered myself up and I had these big, long maxi skirts. But you know what? They were heavy and big and bulky. Every, t every chance I got, I ditched a skirt. <laughs> leave one here, leave one there. <laughs> it's too much. That plus my body did shrink a little bit. They, were, they didn't fit anyway. They've fallen down. Uh, so, yeah, so I learned that I don't need a whole lot. Now, when I travel, even when I travel for three months or six months, like when I left home this time, I knew I was gone for six months. I basically have 10 bottoms, like 10 outfits. And I, I needed um, that because I'm going to, I'm doing three different things. So this time I'm in Costa Rica where it's going to be in the 70s, most days. All right, here in San Jose right now, it is 69 degrees and it's 9.13 a.m., 69 degrees, high today, 72, right? So with rain coming, rain coming very soon and looks like rain is going to last the rest of the day. So I'm in Costa Rica during rainy season in San Jose, but I'm taking a beach vacation to the beach. Y'all know, right? Beach vacation here. And I'm take, going to Puerto Rico to a conference. So I need clothes for San Jose during rainy season. I need clothes for Puerto Rico for a conference 
where I need to look like a person who wears real clothes <laughs> and I need beach stuff. So, and still with all of that, I probably have 10 outfits, maybe 12. Now I do have a big, I have a checked bag because I brought some extra stuff because I'm working. I'll show, I brought, this is a portion of my stack of books, right? So I've got a stack of books I'm reading. I just finished Abolish, um, I just finished reading the Abolitionist Handbook. Patrice Cullors, uh, one of the Black Lives Matter founders. And I'm reading, cash, I'm finishing the Cashing Out book from Kirsten Saunders. Um, I brought actual physical books this time. Uh, but I did learn to travel with very little. Very few hair products. I just buy something at the, at the drugstore when I get there. Uh, mostly underwear. Like seriously. <laughs> Mostly underwear. I probably have twice the underwear I need um, and not much else. I do have uh, this thing. This is right here, so I'll show it to you. I have this. I don't need this. I brought it because I love it and I just wanted it in my life. I didn't want to go. <laughs> I brought this leather bag. I have a thing for this color of orange in leather. Uh, it just it talks to me. When, I'm, when I see it, it's, it's like I can hear it saying, you need this. You need this bag. You're not going to be happy without it ever. If you go on with your life without me, you'll regret it forever. So I, I have, so I brought this. I don't need this. There's no use case for this. Even in the conference, I'm not going to need this. I pretended that I was going to need it for the conference. Uh, and this is big and bulky. Uh, even with all of that, all these books and this big old purse, I'm still not, my bags aren't full. Okay. How was the black? Um, it's amazing. The abolitionist handbook, 12 steps to changing yourself in the world is amazing. It's simple. I thought it was going to be complicated. I don't know why, but it's simple, right? This, the 12 steps are really simple things that, um, yeah, simple things that you want either want to do or already doing, right? Have courageous conversations, respond versus react. Number three, nothing is fixed. Number four, say yes to imagination. Number five, forgive actively, not passively. Number six, allow yourself to feel. Number seven, commit to not harming or abusing others. Number eight, practice accountability. Number nine, embrace non-reformist reform. 10, build community. 11, value interpersonal relationships. 12, fight the U.S. rather than make it stronger. Fight the U.S. state rather than make it stronger. It's incredibly helpful and useful while still being easy to read. I've really, I really enjoyed reading this book. Um, and then I'm moving into, I think after I finish cashing out. So cashing out, I'm partially reading it and partially listening to it on audiobook. So like the other day when I went to the store, I listened to it on audiobook while I was walking. And then I think after that, I'm going to read this book on finding your people, how to build community um, to help me do get my business mind together for the next uh, year. Uh, it's But it's wonderful. It's one, buy it, read it, love it. <laughs> if you're watching the replay, I'll drop the link to it in the description of this video. Yes. I, uh, yes, it's wonderful, wonderful. It's better than I thought it was going to be. I bought it because it was in Target, right? <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I bought it because it was in Target. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm going to buy it. If I'm in Target, I'm going to buy it. And um, I, it's a book that I will go back to again and again. I will read and reread and reread. All right, where are we? <laughs> Arnell, I can't, I can't, I'm not resisting it. I'm not even going to try. I'm not even going to try. This is a company called Parker Clay. They have women in Ethiopia who make their bags. They're a B Corp, a certified B Corp. So they, um, this is not, not sponsored, hashtag not sponsored. Parker Clay is a certified B Corp, which means that they um, have a rating that says that they are treating their workers hum humanely, right? And sharing, I think they're a profit sharing corporation, profit sharer. Um, so it's made in Ethiopia. It's 
It's beautiful. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's beautiful. I bought some leather polish. I don't know if I want to keep it like this or if I want to polish it. I have leather polish with me. This is the this is a thing. It's the only thing that I really have that just like I'm buying it. I'm not a shoe person. Y'all know I'm not a hair product person. I'm not a I like the same jewelry over, over and over. Also, you know that <laughs> this isn't even real. The earrings are gold, are like real gold, but the necklace, I can't, I can't find, a, I want this necklace in real gold and I can't find anything really like it. Um, but that that is my thing. Orangey, orangeish, orangeish leather. I don't care, I'ma buy it, I'ma buy it, I'ma buy it. I don't have a need for it. Where do I go? I don't leave the house. I don't leave the house. I was in this house two days before I realized I didn't know how to open the front door. I'm not even kidding. I got to the Airbnb and the Airbnb late host, who's the owner, this is the, I, this is, I did do a good job of renting an Airbnb from a local person this time. So the Airbnb lady came, gave me the keys. I was, you know, my stomach, mm -hmm. and I had groceries, I had food with me. Put my food away. The next day, ate the food that I had. I, the next day, I don't think I really ate much of anything. Uh, when it was time for me to go to the grocery store, I didn't realize, I didn't know how to open the door. The, not the front door to the house, but the gate. I didn't know how to open the gate. The woman, my next door neighbor, the neighbor heard me and came out and opened the door for me. <laughs> I didn't know how, two days. I had been here for two days. And I didn't know how to open the gate. I'm talking about, I, I'm not saying one day and it was the next day. I got here on Monday and this was on Tuesday. I got here on Monday and this was Wednesday. I didn't know how to open the, I didn't know how to get out. Because <laughs> I don't go places. And so the, she came over, she heard me. She came over. No, she didn't. She buzzed it open. That's why I think the Hare Krishna place, I think they're the Hare Krishna place. She buzzed the thing open for me to get out. And I said, but, pero, pero, permiso. <laughs> no, tengo la chave. I told her, I have the key, tengo la chave, pero no sé, uh, pero no trabajo. That's what I told her. I, I don't work. I'm trying to explain to her the key doesn't work. I have the key, the key doesn't work, but I said, I don't work. Um, and then she was like, Let's try this key. That one, and it didn't work. And then, but I had another key. Let's try this key. I had to turn it the other other direction, the direction that was opposite of what I thought. One of my special, I say that no one is an exception. No one is exceptional. We're all humans. We all have the ability to do tremendously, amazingly, overwhelmingly exceptional things. That mean all of us. That means none of us are exceptional, right? I believe that wholeheartedly, but. An exceptional thing about me is I can't open a door with a key. I, can't. I struggle with locks and keys. I struggle with it all the time. Uh, the last Airbnb was a keypad. You have so you put in the key number and then you turn the thing, right? And then you have to use the handle to get in the door. I put in the keypad. I turn the thing. I hear it unlock. And then. I go push down the handle. It's an up and down handle. I couldn't get in the door. I'm like, wait, let me do it again. Push down the handle, couldn't get in the door. Do it again, turn the thing, push down the handle, couldn't get in the door. I can hear it unlocking. I, you have to pull the handle up. It was the only handle I've ever seen in my whole life that is a pull up handle, not a push down handle. Like even something as simple as that, I couldn't do it. That is my secret shame. <laughs> I can never do locks and keys right. All right. Yes, they're going to have a sale. If you're interested in Parker Clay's uh, uh, leather, they're going to have a sale. My makeup bag is Parker Clay. I would get it if I could. They have this, I use a little leather makeup bag that's about like this that zips from side to side. And I have a couple of Parker Clay things. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, and they're, they have every now and then they'll show you like, just, you know, the women. <laughs> here's here's the women in Ethiopia making the stuff. And they seem like a like a legit company. They are a certified B Corp, which is a thing that you need to you can't trust the company who says, Oh, we're green, oh we're we give back to our people, or we're we're revenue sharing with our employees. You don't know if they are or not. So they are a certified B Corp, so I think they're doing it. 
All right. Yes, right? I believe this wholeheartedly. I believe wholeheartedly. Caddy Wagon 29 says, if everyone is special, no one is. That's right. We all have the ability to do amazingly, tremendously, overwhelmingly, exceedingly abundantly, exceptional things. We got the power. <laughs> we got the power. That means you're not an exception. I'm not an exception. Just use your power. <laughs> use your power. I know, right? In Europe, you don't, right? You don't turn the knob. You just like a push. <laughs> Put your back into it. Yeah. You got to learn. Keys are a thing you have to learn in every house. As a house sitter, I've had many a time where I just had to like, let's see. I got to figure this out. So sometimes I know to ask people, the keys and the stove, sometimes the stove, in different countries, the stoves are different. I know to ask people, but um, I forgot to ask. I didn't feel good, right? I didn't want to be all in her face. <laughs> I did have my mask on, but I didn't want to be all in her face. I don't know how long before I'm going to have to get back on this toilet. Let's get her out of here. She, want, she did want to show me stuff. Okay. Yes. Yes. Most, you're welcome. Hi, Shawnee. Yes, Halisi says most employee-owned companies are also B Corps. Yes. So I feel good about, at least if I'm going to throw my money at them, <laughs> I think maybe some of the money is going to a good place. <laughs> some of the money is going to their employees. All right. Okay, where are we on the list of things I learned? I think we may have done it. Time is really moving fast. Can you believe that? Always say yes to a meetup. I learned to always say yes to a meetup. I told you about Jazzy in Vietnam and Claire in Thailand and Vietnam and in the Philippines. Um, let's see, who else? Uzo in Vietnam, just everyone. Always say yes to a meetup, always say yes. You forget how lonely you can be out on the road or even if you're with someone, how much you just really want. <laughs> So the company of a different person. Let's hear some different stories for a little while, right? Let's hear a different accent for a little while. So I always say yes to a meetup. That's uh, a thing that started before. Because as I said, I would just be a no. <laughs> you asked me to do something before? No, thanks. <laughs> but now I'm always a yes. Always a yes to a meetup. I learned how to take a very good tripod selfie. So most of these photos are tripod selfies, right? Where I plunk down my tripod and I take a selfie. That's what a tripod selfie is. This is a tripod selfie in Paris, right? That's me smiling at my tripod early in the morning <laughs> while the sun is coming up in Paris. Um, this was just a layover. This was my first stop in Paris and it was just a really long layover and then Marcy and I went back later. Um, tripod selfie, tripod selfie. Any others in here? Oh, the cover for the for this video is a tripod selfie. Now, a man did the motorbike driver did take me around to places. Uh, he t he I got on I rented the driver for the day. Like I was just like, hey, you know, he said, where do you want to go? And I was like, where where is there on this island? This was a really tiny island in the Philippines that my Airbnb host had told me to go. So I had been on Cebu, and she was like, you need to go to Com 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 Comoros. Comoros? Now I can't remember the name. You need to go get on the ferry and go to Comoros. So I went there for a couple of days. Motorbike driver drove me around, but I took this picture. He had, he was, he was, I did have a driver though that day. I remember that. It was very nice. Uh, this is a tripod selfie in Portugal. How can I forget that? This is Sintra. Portugal, right? I look like I'm addressing my <laughs> my fans. <laughs> this is just me in a tripod. So I learned how to take a good tripod selfie. Uh, and I learned to not have any embarrassment about it. If you're ever feeling like you want, you wish you could drop your tripod down and take some pictures, but there's people watching, just do it. Because if you don't do it, them Asian girls are out there doing it and they're going to come away with all the good photos and you going home without your picture right? Just do it. Don't let, don't let the people, everyone has seen someone do this before. You're not, this is another, you're not exceptional. You're, everyone has seen this happen. Everyone has been somewhere and seen someone put their phone down and take some pictures of themselves. Okay. I think we made it through my list. I can see something through to the end. 
I learned to trust the stranger and talk to new people. I learned I'm not a worker. I learned it's really easy to adjust to less. Another point of adjusting to less was like just taking bucket showers, staying in houses of people in the Philippines and in probably Thailand and Cambodia. No, Philippines and Cambodia, where they don't have a shower, <laughs> right? They don't have running water. You fill up a bucket and then you get a little cup you get yourself naked in whatever that space is called. I guess it's still called a bathroom. You splash yourself with a bunch of water. You soap yourself down. And then you splash yourself with some more water, right? I learned how easy it was for me to adjust to having to doing, to doing having less things and doing less. Uh, and then also how easy it is to adjust to getting right back. As soon as I'm back in the United States, I'm back to shopping, right? Even though I can spend a year not buying a single thing. I've spent, I don't know about a year not buying a thing, but like, anything major. I'll buy trinkets and stuff because listen, if they're selling it, I'm buying it. I don't care. I don't care. If I have money in my pocket, I'm buying it. But like clothing, being in a place where I couldn't buy clothing as you know, and feeling like I didn't really need it. As soon as I step foot back in the United States, I'm back to shop, 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 right? Shop, buy, buy, buy. Um, I learned how to ride a motorbike. I learned how I can travel with kids. I learned to always say yes to a meetup and I learned to take a good tripod selfie. Okay. So those are the things that I learned during my sabbatical. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to this. If you are in the mood for your own sabbatical, if you're in the mood for your own career break and you need some coaching, I don't do that. <laughs> okay, I don't do career break coaching. I do house sitting coaching and I do YouTube slash business coaching. But I do know a career break coach. Okay, Rashida Dow, who is from... No, who is Sheeta's on the loose on YouTube, uh, is a career break coach. And she has a program called From Burnout to Bliss. From Burnout to Bliss is group coaching for your sabbatical, for your career break, for your mini retirement, for your move abroad. Uh, if you need some help in a variety of ways, right? You need support in a variety of ways. You got to quit your job. You got to get rid of your stuff. You got to pick some locations. You got to figure out the timing. You got to figure out the budget. Right. If you need if you have some balls in the air and you would like some support with that from a career break planner, from a career break break coach, Rashida Dow is your person. OK, go to from burnout to bliss dot co. The link will be in the description of this video if you're watching the replay. All right. From burnout to bliss dot co. So you're getting coaching from Rashida. You're getting um, accountability towards the thing, right? You get someone who you could say, I'm doing it and here's the countdown. But you're also getting community. You're getting coaching, accountability, and community because From Burnout to Bliss is group coaching. So there's a group of black women working towards this plan together. They have different timelines, they have different budgets, they have different plans, but they are working on this thing together. The From Burnout to Bliss gang is tight. I got to meet some of the women in Cancun when we had the Cancun meetup in July. Uh, there's something to be said about having people on your side or on your, who are also doing the same thing. You might have somebody in your life right now who is like, good, I want you to take a career break. I support it. Um, but they can't really, they don't really know. <laughs> when you, when you start talking about, oh, but I'm scared. They're like, you said you was going to do it. What's the problem? Right. Or when you're like, I have questions about X, Y, Z. And they're like, I don't know. How am I supposed to know, right? These are the things that you get when you join in with a community of people who are working towards a similar goal. So from burnouttobliss.co is your, is your gang. The next cohort or the next like group is kicking up very soon. So go ahead and jump into From Burnout to Bliss today. If, if you want some, some support, if you want the coaching and the accountability and the community, Go ahead and jump into From Burnout to Bliss today so that you can get in with this new gang of women who are, who are just getting started. Uh, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like support. Okay? All right. From Burnout to Bliss.co. Again, the link to that is in the description of this video. My sabbatical was me trying to figure things out piece, a piece at a time from a variety of different people. Uh, this was 2015, so like there were these two bloggers called Sam and Audrey who were white kids from, I think Canada, I was going to say Canada, white kids from Canada, 
Uh, I think based on the way they talk, I think that's where they're from. And so they had bopped around. So I used them for a little bit of the travel planning. I didn't have anybody to talk to about the job quitting. I had been, I had quit many a job. I'm a serial job quitter. So I quit many a job, but I didn't have anybody to talk to about like maximizing my hours and my time before I quit. Um, so that it would have been helpful. I wish I'd talked to someone about that because what I didn't realize, like small things, I didn't realize that I was going to get paid out for my PTO. Um, a coach like Rashida would have told me to check in on these kinds of things. So I got a PTO payout after I was already in Malaysia. And I was like, oh, I got to, why is there extra money, right? I got a deposit. So there were some things that I didn't know to look for, you know, that I didn't, I just didn't know. Um, yeah, but it just, and then I didn't have anybody so my coworkers were pretty supportive, but they couldn't help me, <laughs> right? They were supportive, but they couldn't help me. And maybe a one or two wasn't even supportive, <laughs> right? They were like, girl, what? That's dangerous, that's a mistake, that's dumb. Uh, but most, no, mostly supportive. Uh, but I just didn't have anybody else who was doing it. I didn't have friends in this. Um, so it would have been really wonderful to have that when I was planning my own thing. And I think it would have been, I think I would have done a better job of preparing for contingencies. Like I drowned my phone. I didn't have a real, I didn't have any cushion. I didn't have any cushion in my budget, which a coach would have told me to get. <laughs> uh, I drowned my phone in the Philippines and I had to replace my cell phone. I bought an iPad. No, I didn't. I bought a laptop in Australia. I got so sick of just having my phone and my iPad that I bought a laptop in Australia. Um, something I like when I went to the hospital, but that was only $30. My hospital bill was only $30, but I had some conting some contingencies that I didn't have money for. So my solution was just, I need to do some extra work exchanges to get free accommodation, free room and board to make up that money, to recoup that money. Uh, but it would have been nice to have had the cushion to begin with. Um, but that's that's how things went for me. <laughs> that's how things went during my sabbatical. I um, had an amazing time and it changed everything about me. It changed everything. I came back and I was determined not to go back to working that way, working the way I was. I wanted. To, I was determined to keep travel as a, a really important part of my life. I don't know if travel is the center of my life. I'm the center. But travel is, has an important role to play in my life and I wanted to keep that and I couldn't do that working the way I was working. So I changed it, changed everything. <laughs> changed everything. Got a whole new community, high new community out of it. A whole new business, like a whole new thing. This wasn't my plan. It's not like I'm like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna take a sabbatical and then I'm gonna become a YouTuber and talk about sabbaticals. No. <laughs> my plan was I'm gonna take a sabbatical and then I'm gonna move back to the US and try to find a, a job in a city where I don't need a car. That was the change I thought I was gonna make, right? I don't wanna live with the car. I don't wanna have to have a car to live. Um, let's find a place, maybe Chicago, maybe, I, I can't remember what my list really was. I did know that in the Bay Area, I have 10% disability from the U.S. Army, and I did hear, find out in the Bay Area that I could have, that you can ride the Metro for free, I think. Um, I think. Don't quote me on that. Okay, don't go to the Metro and try to get on for free. But I think that was what it was. But I could, and, and then like Mobile, Alabama has some really walkable neighborhoods, but do I want to live in it? Eh, right? Uh, so that was my thing. I was going to come back and just try to find a way to work in the pharmacy um, without a job, I mean, without a car, trying to find a job in a place where I could say hi, where I could try to find a place. <laughs> Hello, Black Culture Talks. I can't read and talk. The community says hi back. Thank you. Find to try to find a job in a place where I didn't need a car. And, um, instead I was like, oh, I ain't trying to find a job at all. <laughs> Let me find some house sitting. That's what I want to find. I came back from my sabbatical and discovered house sitting, started my virtual assistant business. And that was it. That was it. That was it. I what? I'm not. No turning back. No turning back. And it, I wouldn't have thought about things differently if I hadn't taken that significant time away from work to find me. I didn't really think I needed to find myself. This was not a find myself kind of trip. I didn't think, 
but it turns out it was. <laughs> the plan was not to go find myself. I just wanted to take a bunch of pretty pictures, eat a lot of food, float in the water, hammock in some hammocks, right? Do some hammocking. I just wanted to do that kind of stuff for a year. I thought I was gonna get all the travel out of my system. It didn't work that way. <laughs> a whole new life. My sabbatical, um, my sabbatical um, introduced me to a whole new life. So I hope that you'll make a, a real effort to get this for yourself. Okay. <laughs> what do you want? Do, do you have a question? <laughs> you think I'm wrapping up? Jokes on you. I don't know how to wrap up. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know I'm going to keep talking. All right. You know, I'm going to keep talking. Just ask me a question. I'm easy. I'm like that substitute teacher where you don't want to do the lesson and you just ask a question and they'll be like, okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> Is out there, as I said, I did it on extreme, on a budget and I could do it even cheaper if I had known about house sitting back then, right? $1,200 a month could have been eight, maybe $800 a month if I'd known house sitting. So that's why I talk about it so much. That's why I bring other women on here to talk about it so much. It's worth it. I am not the same person. I really like who I am today. I really like the life that I have today. And my sabbatical was the gateway. Okay, so Sandra, we Rashida and I interviewed Sandra, who is from Lack to Legacy. We interviewed her on the Exodus Summit YouTube channel. And she was like, y'all are here telling people to take a sabbatical. You know good and well, they're not going to, the sabbatical is not enough and they're going to end up moving abroad. She is like, they don't tell you. A sabbatical is the gateway drug. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a secret. But maybe it is a secret. <laughs> the sabbatical is a gateway drug. It's a gateway drug to a whole new perspective on your life, which may very well include, listen, I don't want to work. Now what? <laughs> I don't want to work. Now what? Can you house it with a teenage son? Yes, you can, Alicia. Yes. When you apply for house sits, you um, tell them it's the two of us. Some people will be like, sure. Right. Sometimes it'll just be a matter of space. A lot of these house sitting clients have kids. Right. So what, what do they care if you and your kid are in the house? As long as you tell them what's going on. Get my new house sitter toolkit at housesit.vicarious.com slash toolkit. Let me put that here. Get my new house sitter toolkit. It'll walk you through some house sitting information and um, get you ready to get your trusted house sitters membership and get going, get started. Yeah. So in Mexico. So after after that, I came back in 2016, 27, 20, 2016. Yes. 2017, I spent in um, what's it called? South Africa, came back. 2018, I spent in Mexico because of house sitting. And 2018, I mean, I spent hardly no money. I had hardly no money and I spent hardly no money because of house sitting, because I got free accommodation. House sitting does not pay, especially through trusted house sitters. These house sits are unpaid, but I got free accommodation for that length of time. All right. Oh, Chloe, house sitting right now in St. Petersburg, Florida, letting me drive one of their Porsches. Girl, <laughs> call me next time. <laughs> Um, 11. So next, oh, I wonder if they, so my how y'all going to be mad at me for telling you this. My house sitting clients that I loved from last summer in Tampa, they asked me if I could house sit for them next weekend. Of course I can't because I'm in Costa Rica. And then I checked with somebody from Exodus, the Exodus squad. And then by the time I got, and she, she was not available. And then by the time I got back to them, they had booked someone else. They had booked a, a stranger. Um, if I had moved faster, you know, but I don't be looking at my phone. By the time I saw her message, her husband had already posted it on Trusted House Sitters. But that Tampa house sit was available. Anyway, uh, good. Good, Chloe. We're going to talk house sitting next week for the next couple of weeks because, you know, November is house sitter season. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Martin Luther King Day. These are house sitting bonanzas. It's house sitter season. So we're going to talk house sitting next Saturday. OK, y'all be here next week and the week after. I have two different guests coming on to talk about their experiences with house sitting. So y'all don't have to take my word for it. OK, that's wonderful, Chloe. How many pets and do you like it? 
That's wonderful. Yes, right? <laughs> yes, that's another thing, right? House sitting opened up a new world. The sabbatical led me to house sitting and house sitting led me to like just a new world. Oh, Verna, I did my first house sit after listening to you for a while and I used your template. Good, good, Verna. Did you, I hope you liked it. All right, did you enjoy it is the question. And are you doing more? Oh, that's awesome. You guys are doing it. So I'm glad that you guys um, report back because <laughs> I don't hear, so because house sitter school is set up the way it's set up, right? Because you find out about house sitter school from my YouTube channel and then you go to house sitter school because I say go to house sitter school. I don't see you guys. I don't see y'all. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get an update. So thank you for coming here to update me. I'm like, are people house sitting out here? I don't know. I think so, <laughs> but I don't know. I think so because Trusted House Sitters reached out to me a while ago and was like, thank you for the work you're doing. I'm like, you're welcome. Thank you for the cash because they pay me. I have an affiliate relationship with Trusted House Sitters. So they pay me a piece of the commission. So thank you all for that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Doesn't cost you anything extra. Don't get upset. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but they share a piece of that with me. Uh, affiliate marketing is wonderful. It's one of the benefits of having a YouTube channel. Your YouTube channel really does make you money while you're just do, out doing other things. While I'm out, just, you know, I said out. While I'm awake <laughs> or sleeping, I don't go out. But while I'm doing things or not doing things, my YouTube channel makes me money. So while I read the abolitionist handbook, my YouTube channel was making me some money in a variety of different ways. Now, my YouTube challenge, YouTube success five day challenge for November is full. We start on Monday. YouTube Success 5-Day Challenge starts on Monday. If you're, if you're bummed out about that, <laughs> that you didn't get in this time, go to vicarious.com slash challenge and get on the wait list. Vicarious.com slash challenge. Get on the wait list for the YouTube Success 5-Day Challenge. Um, I'll probably do it again in February or March. Or def I guess the word is definitely. We'll def Clarice and I will definitely host the challenge again. Uh, and it'll probably be February or March. Definitely February or March. I don't know why I can't say that. Definitely February or March, but no dates yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, right. Having a YouTube chat. So my sabbatical led me to house sitting, which led me to talking about house sitting on YouTube, which led me to like, I'm not at financial freedom. I need to find a good way to explain this. So a financial freedom to me means that you don't need to earn another dollar. Am I wrong about that? The definition of financial freedom? That I don't need, I still need to earn money, but I don't need a job. <laughs> That's freedom to me, but it's not true. I don't wanna mis mis mislead you. It hasn't led me to financial freedom in just three years, but it has led me to not needing a job. I ain't thinking about no job. I ain't worried about no job. Uh, yes, right? I can live the life of my dreams um, because of these things. I went from the sabbatical to house sitting to YouTube to coaching. And boom, I get to live my life, my dreams. Yeah, right? And as we've said, I'm not exceptional. I'm not exceptional. I'm not exceptional, okay? All right? I'm talking to you, right? So you can live your dreams without the things that you think you need that are dragging you down. Toni Morrison, right, said, if you wanna fly, you have to give up that shit that weighs you down. And I've done it. That For me, that was a job. <laughs> so that I could fly, I had to give up the job. <laughs> for some of us, it's other things. Uh, but there is, uh, it's a, this is a wonderful time in, the, in all of humanity, <laughs> in all of the existence of humanity. It's a wonderful time to be alive. People are out here showing you how to do things and teaching you how to do things. YouTube, YouTube really has changed things for me. Just this week, so just this week, I learned about product licensing on YouTube. I learned about, so you know that I'm, I'm writing a book and, I wanna pub, and I'm publishing the book myself. I learned about setting up a uh, publishing company right? So that I can publish my own work and other people's work from YouTube, right? Uh, anything else I learned from YouTube? I learned how to put a French press back together 
because the, the coffee maker, I don't like the coffee maker, but they have a French press, right? This is a wonderful time to be alive. There are things out in the world. There are people out sharing in the world how to help, how to teach you how to do things. You're an independent contractor. No, no, I, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I run my own business, which is my coaching programs, <laughs> plural. My umbrella business is Stephanie Perry Media, but that's not a helpful descriptor. Uh, I coach people on how to run a YouTube channel. channel. I coach people on becoming a house sitter. And then Rashida and I host the Exodus Summit. Uh, so these are the ways that I make money. I'm not an independent contractor. I don't work for anybody but me right now or for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm an entrepreneur who does as little as possible. And I mean that, I mean that, right? Just this morning, Francis sent me an email. Somebody was freaking out about the challenge. The challenge doesn't start until Monday. And somebody was freaking out. Did I miss it? Did I miss it? And I think it was getting on Francis's nerves that I had not yet replied, but I'm like, I do as little as possible. I'm sending an email out on Saturday she just gonna have to wait <laughs> until Saturday to hear that she didn't miss it. If she doesn't know how to find the, the dates from the previous email, right? I send a, I've sent, I'm, I'm not saying I've not communicated with the people in the challenge. Everyone in the challenge has gotten an email or two from me already, right? But the next challenge, I mean, but the next email comes out on Saturday, right? That's when that email goes out. <laughs> I do as little as possible. I mean it. <laughs> yes, right? I got a schedule. I'm not doing extra stuff. All right. F Doctor wants to talk wants us to talk about dreams versus purpose. Here's why I don't want to. Black women don't need to worry about their purpose. Your purpose is so F Doctor was right in the in your comments. You are very right. You are very right when you said that purpose has to do with your, your relationship to others and what you do for others. Your purpose is not transactional, but your purpose requires you to go out and be and do for other people. I don't care about your purpose. I don't care about your purpose. I don't care about your purpose. Live your dreams. We've done enough of we're operating within our purpose. I think black women have done enough operating within our purpose to the detriment of our own dreams. I don't care about your purpose. Live your dreams. <laughs> I will say that I think your purpose is ever ch is changing and growing or changing. I don't know about growing. Your purpose is changing. But I don't think black women need to be worried about operating within their purpose because your purpose does include you being and doing for others. I think it's time for black women to live their own dreams. I don't know how you can live your own dreams and focus on your purpose and how you show up and do for others. I could be wrong about this. This is my just pondering answer. I've pondered this. <laughs> I've not read a book on this. I've not researched this. I've not brought on a guest to talk about this. I think enough with your purpose. Live your dreams. I'm not saying that you need to turn your back on your purpose. If you have a purpose in life, okay. But how your dreams doing? If you don't know your purpose and you're struggling with that, Change the question, not what is my purpose? What are my dreams? That's what I think. That's what I want for black women. Enough, enough. You've done enough, enough, enough with the purpose, enough. What are your dreams? So I know you want, you've asked me this, I responded in the comments and I was like, this is a good question, but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> this is why I've not done a video on finding your purpose. I've done videos about breakthroughs, right? If you feel like you're stuck, how to get a breakthrough. But all, all every, what I do is about the dream. What this channel is about living your dreams. And this community. 
So that's why. Hi, Alicia. Alicia Renice. Yes, I honestly think our dreams are connected to our purpose. Your purpose is to fulfill your dreams. Okay, good. All right, then done it. <laughs> done. <laughs> Too many times black women have to or get the message to be for others more than you are for yourself. Show up for others in a way that you don't show up for yourself. Sacrifice for yourself in order to pour into others. I've opted out. I've opted out. Pass. Pass. I wish I could do that for you too, right? <laughs> okay, so Shamanda, I think I know how to decide what, I know how to find your dreams. I, I think I know, it's just free time. I'm not kidding. I did a video called, if you need a breakthrough, <laughs> let's see, I don't know how long it's gonna take. Okay, Y'all bear with me, okay. So I did a video about a breakthrough. And the real solution is breakthroughs for black women. <clears throat> Let me find this video. Breakthroughs. For, oh, I have a playlist. Okay, Stop hold on. Stop applying for jobs. Copy. But I want the actual, is this the whole playlist? I'm going I'm to copy and paste my breakthroughs for black women playlist. Uh, the videos are Stop Applying for Jobs when your peace of mind makes other people uncomfortable. But the real video I think you might want to watch is if you feel unfulfilled and stuck, life breakthrough in 10 steps, okay? If you feel unfulfilled and stuck, life breakthrough in 10 steps. Let me link to that video. Uh, this is the playlist actually, sorry. This is the link to the whole playlist, which is why it looks like that. Playlist links are bonkers <laughs> i'll link to this in the description of the video as well i'm gonna just this in the chat though so you can open that up it'll open up in another window so you'll have it for later but the real the short condensed version of that is a breakthrough happens when you have free time right and when you look back at the things that you you that used to be your dreams or your, and maybe not your dreams, but at least your passions or your funds, right? What are the things that used to be fun for you? My fun stuff, right? What was my fun stuff? I've always been a talker, as I said, right? What were the things that, even, like, as a child, not even, before I, before I knew to censor my dreams, what were my dreams? What were the things that were fun for me? <clears throat> and then give yourself free time. Think to, just think, remember, dream forward, right? And then try something, like seriously, try something. You don't, you, I don't know that your dreams, I don't know the answer to whether there is a dream for people or in, you know, individual dreams for people, or if you just happen to stumble into something and then that thing becomes your dream. I don't know which one it is. I, my dream is to be a writer. I've wanted to be a writer as, from forever. As a kid, I wanted to be a writer. <clears throat> and even I wanted to publish books. I don't even know that I really understood what publishing books was. But I don't know. Yes, Orletta, a burned out brain cannot dream. That's right. We need free time. We need free time. We need peace of mind. In order for the dream to feel safe to come out, we need some peace of mind and some free time. Uh, so I don't know if there's a, such a thing as a dream for you or just something, trying something. And then it can, can that thing become your dream, right? I don't know the answer, but I know that if you try some things, something will stick and some things won't. Some things you'll be like, nope, that's not for me. Yes, this is my thing. This is sticking. Yes, okay? So you, if you don't know what you want for yourself, don't beat yourself up. Like you live in a whole system that was designed for you to know, not know what you want for yourself. Like that is the point. <laughs> That's how our entire lives were set up by the man for us to not know what we want for ourselves, to keep us in this on this track and not start like wandering off into our own spaces. They need us here. They need us in the United States to be workers. First, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth to be the worker. Uh, so you don't you don't know what you want for yourself because. That's how the system was set up. That's how the whole thing was designed. 
So don't beat yourself up about it is what I'm saying. <laughs> give yourself grace in that but give yourself some free time. Seriously, watch that video. I do a good job, something I'm good at. <laughs> a thing I'm good at is figuring out like, I wanna be here, but I'm here. What steps do I need to take, right? And that video is all just about the steps. I don't know what I want, or I'm feeling stuck, or either I don't know or I do know and I'm stuck. Now what do I do? Let me break it into some steps. It's something I can do. <laughs> and I did that for you in that video. I did that for you. Okay? So it's there. Okay? Stephanie DK, I used to spend a lot of my time trying to find my purpose, but now I just open myself up to new experiences. Less stressful. That's it. That's it. Right? That purpose stuff, that's just to drive you to an early grave, girl. <laughs> I'm not down with purpose. I'm not. I want to live my dreams. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I want you to live your dreams. They're building a house right next door. Like literally right next door. Uh, I was I set this up outside earlier on the little outside space in the garden, but the hammering was too echoey. So I moved inside. Uh, it's 10 a.m. now, so they were going to go full force. From about 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., they kind of keep it quiet. They still work. I don't know. I don't know. Because, you know, it rains here so early. The rain Once the rain starts, in the on, it's rainy season. So once the rain starts for the day, you know, they can't build a house. So they start very early, but around 10 is when it, things really just happen okay so you're going to hear that well hopefully we're close to being done you know what i haven't done which i have been doing a poor job of for the longest time is super chats i'm sorry y'all okay oh this is jill hi jill asian drama black women jill's youtube channel uh jill loves those asian costume dramas and her youtube channel is about that so if you're into that, check out Jill's channel. I'm sorry, Jill, I hope you're here. Did you address whether you think you can do a 12 month sabbatical for the same amount as your first sabbatical? Yes, with house sitting, without house sitting, so inflation is real, without house sitting, I would need to look and see what accommodation prices are today. I'm not kidding when I say I spent, I'm pretty sure I stayed in an actual hotel room in Vietnam for $7 a day. I'm pretty sure, right? I don't know what inflation has done out in these streets. Um, with house sitting, yes, I know I can. I could still do it on $1,200 a month. Without house sitting, I'd give myself a little bump up, right? 30%? 30%? What's 30% of $1,200? An extra 30%. 1200 times 1 1.3 equals... So we're talking 1560. I would feel comfortable that I could do it for that. Now remember, this included me staying in hostels, right? If you're not a person who's going to stay in a dorm room in a hostel, if you're not going to do some of the things that I did, if you're not going to do a work exchange and live with a family to get free accommodation, if you're not going to poop into a compo a homemade composting toilet which was just a trash can with some horse manure, right? If you're not doing that, you need to bump your budget up. OK, remember, I I was able to do a lot with less. I talked about it. Right. I took a shower. I stayed in two or three different places in the year, two or three different times. I stayed for multiple days in places with no running water. All right. Maybe four, <laughs> maybe four. Right. My budget is not your budget. Maybe this means that you would just, you could, you can still do a year, but it may mean that you stay in one place because like in Hoi An, Vietnam, my, I stayed in a guest house in Hoi An, Vietnam for the month. And I believe that was where I paid 360 for the month. My accommodation was $360 for a month. It was a bedroom that looked a lot like this actually with a little mini fridge I don't remember if I had a microwave. And then there was a kitchen. So there, the house had a kitchen. Every, there was three or four bedrooms and the, it was full. There was a dude from Denmark, a young kid from Denmark, and a man from 
was he Australian? An Australian man? Maybe Australian. I, didn't, I never talked to him. It, the, we had the dude from Denmark talk to both of us, and he would like gossip. <laughs> so I knew the other man's business, but I didn't, I never met him. I never talked to him. Uh, anyway, anyway, shared kitchen in solo bathroom. I want to say $360 for the month. And then in Chiang Mai, Thailand, I paid $480 for the month. Right. Anyway, all this to say, I don't know. <laughs> Inflation is real. Food costs more. I food costs more. So I don't know. And I bopped around and took a lot of buses and trains and planes. And this time I probably if I needed to stay on a smaller budget, I would just stay in places longer and do less bopping. I did a lot of bopping, even though I make fun of Rashida for her schedule. There were times when I moved to a different place every three days. But there were times when I stayed put for a month, you know, but I did some three day stuff. I, I moved. I probably visited eight. I'm going to go with eight different towns in Vietnam. Right. That's bopping. I bopped anyway. Maybe is the answer, Jill. I hope you're still here. Doris, thank you very much for that super chat. Thank you. I hope you're here. Buddha Lion. Hi. Hello, Stephanie. Do you have someone that is familiar with establishing residency in Canada? Girl, no. You know how cold it is in Canada? We don't do cold here. <laughs> no, the answer is no. Most people who move to Canada do so for work, I think, because it's, ex it's so expensive. Most people do it for work, and so they don't need outside help. If anyone in the chat knows, holler at your girl, okay? But I'm going to say... No, because it's not really a place people go, people in this world go to because of the cost. Most of us are looking to go to someplace cheaper as opposed to someplace. I mean, Canada's nice, but it's expensive. <laughs> Jill's still here. Okay, good. Hi, thank you very much for that super chat, Jill. I'm sorry that you were the first, one of the first comments and I'm just getting to you. But yeah, right? So Jill is one of my YouTube students, right? You get, you find a thing that you're into, you can form a community around it. You might think you're the only one. You're not the only one because you're not an exception. <laughs> because we're not exceptions. There are other people out here. If we start our thing, our community will form. We got to start our thing with intention and we need to use the tools to our benefits, right? The tools of YouTube and YouTube's algorithm to our benefit to help introduce us to people. But we out here, okay? So if you're into Asian costume dramas, Jill is your girl. Princess Wei Young, I think I remember that. I was spoken with Jill and I have done some coaching calls and I remember she had a video on uh, Princess Wei Young. I think, is that right? <laughs> I still haven't watched, <laughs> but I need to. I I um am I still watch the same stuff that I watched probably ten or fifteen years ago. <laughs> I watch the Golden Girls. I watch Law and Order, the original, right? Like I need a better, <laughs> I need a better media, media. I need better media exposure. All right, all right. Yeah, he wasn't a mean gossip. He would just be like, so-and-so went to such and such a place. He, he would just give me, keep, I never had to have a conversation with that man because, um, what was his name? Not Adrian. Because he told me everything. <laughs> so-and-so went to such and such a place. Uh, they had beer, they had two beers for 50 cents, right? Like that kind of stuff. I would be like, you know, I, oh, there's two beers for a dollar at what you, what you call it restaurant across the street. And he'd be like, such and such went there and the beers were two for 50 cents. Went to a different place. And then, you know, that kind of gossip. I just mean. No space left in my challenge this time, Yvette. Um, so if you want, if you're not on the wait list, get on the wait list at vicarious.com slash challenge. Just hit the button and it'll take you to the wait list thing. You have to fill out the wait list. Um, if you, and then get on the wait list and then open the email. When I send an email that says challenge is open, you gotta, that's, you gotta get on it, right? You gotta get on it. The challenges are smaller and smaller. So this time we, the first challenge, I want to say there were 300 people in that first challenge. I don't know what I was thinking. Don't ask me. Don't ask me what I was thinking. I wasn't. But now uh, 40 people, <laughs> we have 40 people in a challenge. So if you don't get on when the, and I was sick, right? So I was sick when the challenge opened, the, the doors opened. I sent out an email and that was it. 
right? I sent, I had two, I had the wait list. I had two different wait lists because I'd messed something up. Two different wait lists. I sent one email to each of those wait lists and I posted it in my YouTube community tab and it was full, right? And Fran Francis, hi Francis. Francis did share it also with the Exodus community. Uh, but when Francis shared it, I think I had five spots left and that was the end of that. So you have to, if you're on the wait list for the challenge, you've got to get, um, open the email. When that email comes out, says the challenge is open. You got to get on it. I'm thinking, no, I don't want to tell you that. <laughs> okay. How did we do two hours? All right. Let me go back. Yes, vicarious.com slash challenge is the wait list. Do I have a link right here? Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this so I don't have to type it from scratch. This message says that there's space, but there's no more space. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to vicarious.com slash challenge, DD. Go to vicarious.com slash challenge. Click the button as if you want to join the challenge, and then it'll take you to the wait list. Drop your email address and your name, enter that in there, then you're on the wait list, okay? The next time the challenge happens, I send an email to the wait list and basically it fills up. So you're going to need to be, <laughs> open that email. When you get an email from Stephanie at vicarious.com, open the email. We'll probably do it four times next year, maybe five, February or March, sometime in the spring. Sometime in the summer. And after, like early winter. So. If, oh, let me tell you this. If you <clears throat> don't want to wait and you want to learn this information on your own without a challenge right without my feedback if you're okay with learning this on your own without my feedback without the community aspect i have a master class called get found on youtube vicarious.com slash get found okay so if you want to do things you're on your own some of you are self-paced type of people right you want to do things on your own when you have time then go ahead and get the Get Found on YouTube Masterclass. So Get Found on YouTube is the challenge, okay? It's just that in the challenge, you get to walk through it with me. I get to give you feedback. You get to meet other women in the community. But the Get Found on YouTube Masterclass is the same information you're gonna learn in the challenge, okay? So vicarious.com slash get found. Okay. Okay, Chumani says that sounds more like me. If you're in the challenge and you're like, oh, actually, I didn't know you had a master class and I could do it on my own and you want to refund, email me. I'll refund, like, not kidding. I'll refund you, okay? I know that there are people who like to do things on their own. I love group coaching. I love group coaching. There's, it's unmatched. <laughs> There's nothing like group coaching for the stuff that you'll learn that I didn't even know to teach you, right? Somebody's gonna have a question that just like, oh, I didn't even think about that. I would have never even thought to ask that question or I would have never thought to answer that question. Uh, group coaching is wonderful. Plus you get to meet the people who you are going to make videos with them down the road. I know that. Uh, I love to see my students go back and work together. So I love group coaching, that's why I do it. <laughs> I do group coaching because I love it for myself. I love it for you guys. But if you want to go to go through the masterclass on your own, go ahead and get it at vicarious.com slash get found. Okay. All right. Last call questions. Oh, when is my next update on the scouting trip? Probably not until the end of this month. So this whole month, I'm in the neighborhood called Barrio Escalante. I like it so far, but like, you know, like I said, I haven't left the house all that much. So <laughs> I'm not prepared to give you a real update on this neighborhood just yet. Um, my two weeks in Santa Ana, it was more than two weeks, but it was like less than three weeks. My two weeks in Santa Ana went by really quickly. Um, I've got a lot of work to do this month. 
but I hope to do, I hope to still do some real like scouting here. So when will the next update be? Probably late November. Yeah, yeah, probably late November. Next two weeks, we're gonna talk about house sitting though. Cause it's house sitter season. Tanya, what do you do about medical benefits? I have insurance through a private insurance company. So when you're not in the US, there are insurers out there who will insure you because healthcare in the rest of the world is so inexpensive, okay? So as long as I stay out of the United States, I'm insured through a company called Alliance, A-L-L-I-A-N-Z. I spend less than $1,000 a year. I don't know what I pay for insurance. <laughs> I'm the worst at this. I'm, I'm one of those people who's like, just take the money. I don't care. Just take the money. When I had World Nomads, I think it was $850 for the year. And I think Alliance is more like $600 for the year. So I need to make sure I'm actually covered for good stuff. Because <laughs> I, I need to check on what I'm covered on. So there are third party, there are insurance companies who will insure you as long as I'm not in the U.S., right? So I can't go back to the U.S. on this policy. Uh, so I have insurance and then I just would do things out of pocket in a lot of the world, your healthcare access is not tied to you having a job. And so I don't have to work in Costa Rica to be able to get healthcare in Costa Rica. I just need to become a resident of Costa Rica. Okay. Uh, France is like that. Portugal is like that. Mexico is like that. They have some sort of what we would call universal healthcare. They have health care for every resident, right? And you don't have to have a job to, to qualify for it. The United States really has us me messed up thinking about health care. Uh, it's like the job thing. If you were here earlier, we talked about how the United States tells you you're a worker. The United States also tells you you don't have the right to health care. But in other places, seriously, you just have right to, a right to it because you live there. You have a right to, to health care and it's free in some way. <laughs> in Costa Rica, you do pay a percentage of your when you're when you're a temporary resident. Anyway, you do pay a percentage of your income towards your health care costs. But when I tell you health care here is inexpensive or in a lot of the world is inexpensive. Like I said, a broken arm in Thailand, two hundred dollars. Can you imagine breaking your arm, going to the hospital and coming out with a two hundred dollar bill in the United States? MRI. So I looked up some uh, some things. I looked up an MRI here, and I believe they said it was $800. That well women's exam, where you just go and they do the gyno stuff, right? That exam in Mexico was, un it was I think, $150, right? Just pay out of pocket, right? I don't need insurance. I'm just going to pay you. Here's some pesos. So... Healthcare is a reason in the United States that you stay on a job or in a relationship that's not right, right? Oh my gosh. But in the in the rest of the world, healthcare is like a totally separate thing. You don't need to be in a job to have healthcare. And healthcare is much, 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 much cheaper. Much, much cheaper. A YouTube channel on 60 plus travelers is called 60 plus black pat. A YouTube channel for 60 plus. Let me get it. You're going to have me doing all, all kind of copying and pasting 60 plus Deborah. Are you here? Deborah Williams. Valerie has a YouTube channel. She, ha she has a Facebook community one 60 plus black women expats. Okay. It's a regular. No, she's got another channel, right? No. I thought she had one called Black Pats or something like that. No, retirees. Retirees with the E E. Deborah, are you here? Can you help me? Okay, so I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you Deborah's channel, but I think she's got two. She must have two channels. Because I thought it was called something about retirees with the word ease in it. Okay, so this is the channel 60 plus black expats. Okay, 60 plus, if you just, if, if the link, 
it's, if it's easier, just type in 60, the, the plus sign, black expats. It'll come up. She's the only one, right? I have the window open, and uh, I don't know if you can see. There's these. There's two moths or flies or something flying around in front of my lamp, and it's magnifying it, <laughs> but they're small. So still, what am I? Almost a month in Costa Rica, one mosquito bite. One mosquito, and I, my door is open. When I tell you the door is open, it's open, open, right? That door is open because uh, it's just a little patio back there. That door is open. I don't close that door. One month in Costa Rica, one mosquito bite on the back of my hand, which is like stupid. There's no, you, he, he didn't get no blood or she they didn't get no blood. Bite, itching, and you got nothing out of it. Why would you bite somebody on the back of the hand? Do better at your job. All right, one mosquito bite. I don't know. They just don't. And I, remember I said I didn't know if, if I wasn't getting mosquitoes in the house in the other place because I was up on the second floor. Well, I'm on the ground floor. And the front door, front window, front window is open often. I don't open. I don't keep it open all the time, but the front window is open often. Like open, the window is open with no screen. All right. I tried to get a, a thing together. I asked everyone who had a channel, please, to send me their channel information so that I could make it, make a thing, not a directory, but like on, on my YouTube channel page, right? When you go to my YouTube channel page, you'll see I have a list of black women coaches and healers, right? I have a list of something else. I tried to get a list of the Vacarians channels. And I think two people sent them to me. And then I was like, forget it. Then I, I just forgot. <laughs> I was like, y'all don't want it. It's okay. <laughs> we, I agree we need it. But I asked, I d I've done a call for, call for channels. And nobody wanted to share their channels. They don't want me to know. <laughs> Genesis don't 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 challenge the mosquitoes like that. <laughs> They're not coming. They're not here. They don't they don't they don't like me. I don't know. It's good. I'm not saying I'm not this is just a one this is one person's testimonial. Okay, all things oh. Don't come down here and mad at me if you end up uh bit up. Okay, <laughs> I'm just giving you my experiences down here in San Jose. And I'm at, remember, I'm in the San Jose area. I'm not at the um, beach. I'm not at the beach. Okay. <laughs> Leave us alone, Halisi. You know we're still talking. <laughs> Halisi, this time, yet yeah, this time last week, Halisi and I were still talking. And I was like, I can't keep Halisi here all day. <laughs> she, I got to let her live. <laughs> we were still here this time last year. I think we are wrapping it up. I think we are wrapping it up. Where do we send the information? Uh, you can just email me, stephanie at vacarious.com. If you guys want me to put a, a thing on my channel with all the Vacarians YouTube channels, it, it's hard for me to explain it. If you, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see it. it. There's a, it says black women, therapists, coaches, and healers. And there's just a string of channels. And then there's something else in the string of channels. So if you want me to do a Vacarians channel, just send me the link, uh, stephanie at vacarious.com. And just in the email, say something like, Vicarian's YouTube channels. Is that helpful? Okay. Send it on, Pure Elegance. Yeah, I tried to get a, get the Vicarian's, get a little list, right? A little thing. All right. Okay. Okay, y'all ran out of questions. Good. <laughs> Good. All right. I'm scrolling just to make sure. All right, friends, lovely locks. If you really, okay, so if you don't have, if you, okay, two things. I'd still do you um, house sitting coaching, even though I complain about it because a lot of people don't show up. I get no shows, but I do still do house sitting coaches. If you want me to walk through your profile with you, I can do that at, if you go to vicarious.com slash call me. 
almost did it, almost got it right, okay? So if you really do want me to walk you through it, I'll do that at vicarious.com slash call me, but I think it's better if you just get have the house sitter toolkit. Get your new house sitter toolkit. And if you need house sitter school, get house sitter school. House sitter school means you don't have to wait on my schedule in order to get your profile set up. You can get house sitter school and be done, you know, before the afternoon is over. Uh, how is that house sit? <laughs> dot vacary dot com. I don't think that's it. I have a new link for house sitter school. Let's try vacarious.com slash house sit. Well, this is the toolkit. I don't know. Okay, so when you get the toolkit, the toolkit contains the link to house sitter school. I know that's convoluted, but right now I can't remember the link to house sitter school. It's got to be vicarious.com slash house sitter school nope that ain't it either i don't know listen this is okay so this is a i don't have a website i don't know if y'all realize this the reason that i have to remember individual links i have a website but it's, it's basura <laughs> my website is garbage i've made good money without a website you can too if your website is the reason that you haven't started your business, I'm what? House Sitter School is more than two years old. I don't have a real website. I have a bunch of landing pages that make a bunch of money. All right. Anyway, so what you should do is go to the toolkit, get the toolkit. And inside the toolkit, there is the link to House Sitter School. I know. I know. OK, there's an easier way, but I can't remember the link right now to, to get House Sitter School directly. OK, so if you need help setting up your profile with trusted house sitters, I would say either house sitter school or an appointment with me, um, whichever the, the my calendar is not the openest. <laughs> I, don't, I don't work on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and sometimes on Thursdays. Uh, if you're free Saturday and Sunday, you're probably going to find a spot. But if you're not free Saturday or Sunday, who knows when I'll have a spot open for you again? You know what I mean? I'm not trying to discourage you from booking a call with me. I'm giving you realistic expectations. Um, so if you think you can do it on your own, get the toolkit. If you need a little extra help, get house sitter school, okay? If you need individual help, book a call with me at vicarious.com slash call me. Okay, my voice is getting a little tired now. So I think we've done it. I think we've done all we can do. Okay. Thanks, friends. Thanks. So get a link tree. I have, I mean, I actually have a website. It's just ugly and I don't like dealing with it. So it's easier for me to just be like, I don't like link tree. And here's why, Shamika, I'll tell you, I don't trust link tree as a business per person who coaches business people, right? Through my YouTube channel, I coach business people. If link tree was a solid solution, as a place to put your links and get clicks, they their marketing campaign would be use link trees, use link tree, get more clicks. In the business world, the click is the thing. Clicks are important, right? A lot of people go to your page and see your thing. How many people click on a link? If link tree helped you get more clicks, they would say it. I've never seen a Linktree advertisement that says, use Linktree, get more clicks. What that tells me is when people go to a Linktree, this is me guessing, okay? When people go to a Linktree and they see a whole bunch of links, they don't click on any of them, right? Because analysis paralysis or confusion or overwhelm gets to them. I think, I think, I suspect that having a Linktree for your business is more harmful than just giving people a link. So when you ask me for something, I give you a link. How do you book a call with me? Vicarious.com slash call me. Now the website would be an ideal solution. Maybe this year. I don't want I mean next year. I don't want to promise anything because I don't I'm I'm as you, I'm moving into a new space, book writing, book publishing. I don't know how much longer 
not to scare you. I don't know how much longer the house sitting conversation is going to be one that I'm willing to have. So I, don't, I may never need a website that talks about house sitting. I'm moving. I'm moving on, right? Every round goes higher, higher, okay? I'm moving into something new. Uh, but I don't trust the link tree thing. I think it's better to give people one link than have them decide where to go with a, a, a menu of links. If anybody has any stats, show me. I'm not even kidding. I'm not kidding. I, would, I think if I owned Linktree and I knew that, for, for example, if you present people with six links, only 40% of people are gonna click on a link, right? But if you present them with one link, 70% of people would click on a link then I wouldn't talk about their conversion rate at all, which is what they don't do. They don't talk about their conversion rate. But if it was the reverse, I would, I would shout it from the rooftops. 30% more clicks when you use Linktree. All right, okay. I don't, yeah. I have a website, I have a website. Vicarious.com is a website, but you can't find any of my stuff there. <laughs> It's garbage. It's 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 like three years. It's three years old before I did things. My my I have a website, but I don't like it. So I just give you links to landing pages, and you know what? It works. <laughs> it works. I will have made I think <clears throat> this year. I like to compare things to my pharmacy technician salary, right? So I made about forty six thousand dollars a year as a pharmacy technician. <clears throat> This year, five times, Jesus, five, five, 5.4 times this year, by the end of this year, right? Because I'm calculating some things in already. Uh, by the end of this year, 5.4 times my pharmacy technician salary as a business person on the internet <laughs> without a real working website. That stuff that you're using to procrastinate is just to procrastinate. Okay, you can make money without a website. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> Some of y'all have paid for Exodus Summit and meetup tickets and coaching and one-on-one -on -one calls and challenges with me have never been to a website of mine. Right? You can make money without doing the things that you're procrastinating on doing. Sorry, right? It's just procrastination. You're just procrastinating. Just do it. Tell people you do a thing <laughs> and tell them how they can pay you to do the thing for them or with them or to them, right? <laughs> All that other stuff is procrastination. Uh, gross, gross. I made $46,000 as a pharmacy technician. I worked in a hospital and I worked overnight, night shift. So I, so I got shift differential. But 5.4 times that by the end of this year, no website. I don't have a website. Exodus Summit doesn't even have a website. <laughs> Exodus Summit doesn't, there's no Exodus Summit website. When you go to exodussummit.com, you go to the place to buy tickets for Exodus Summit, but that's not our website. That's a ticket, that's the host, that's the um, platform called Hey Summit. It's a platform that hosts summits, right? Y'all know, you can, you can do the math on Exodus Summit. We had 3,000 attendees in Exodus Summit. So you can do the math on that and you can kind of estimate how much money you know we made, right? Uh, we don't have a website. Exodus Summit does not have a website. I'm telling you, <laughs> you need to, it's more important. If you need to go, you can go, friends. Thank you. As you can tell, I don't have a whole lot to do today. I hope, I don't think, I, sometimes after, my, after this, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching call. Saturdays is usually a day for coaching, but I don't have anything to do until noon. So you can, you, so nice to see you friends if you're leaving. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining in. See you next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. All right, but let's talk money. Let's talk business. Um, if you, I, I was, I now I lost the train of thought though. I think I was just talking about the not having a website, right? <laughs> it, the, the procrastination of doing some of those things gets in the way of you making money. What you need is a way to, 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 do a, to do the service, right? Like Zoom, whatever. You need a way to provide the service. You need a way for people to pay you for the service, like PayPal, like Calendly, 
right? Calendly hooks up with PayPal, right? So people can schedule you and pay you at the same time. Um, you need a way to market your business like YouTube or like being a guest on other people's YouTube channels or like speaking in virtual summits. Those are good marketing strategies. Uh, you don't need a website. Not in the beginning. Your clients should pay for your website. The people who have paid you for the services, invest some of that money into a website. Until somebody has paid you for your services, I wouldn't pay for a website. Unless you sell a physical product. Like now, this is in the online space. I don't, unless you sell, unless you make your own physical product and sell your own physical product, that website money should not come out of your pocket. It should come from the clients who have already paid you. Reinvest some of that money, but don't, don't start there. It sure has. It sure has. I'm telling you, this is a wonderful time to be a human. <laughs> it's a wonderful time. There are the platforms out here democratizing things and, and leveling playing fields and giving you access to people. I don't know where else we would have this conversation if YouTube didn't exist. Where would we talk every week about sabbaticals and career breaks and embracing ease, right? Imagine if I had to have a radio show and y'all had to call in <laughs> like it was 1989. <laughs> and then I had to pay the station. I don't even know how radio shows really work. I guess you had to pay the syndicator. The syndicator probably got the money and you got a royalty. I would guess radio hosts get a royalty from their show. They don't get the real money. They get a royalty, a piece of the advertising dollars. YouTube was just like, oh, if can we throw some ads on your video? Here's 60%. Right? <laughs> yeah, problems. When you pay for a website before you before you have clients, you don't really know what words to put on the website, first of all. What language to use to to push buttons, you have to push buttons. Uh, content mar marketing and um, uh, copy, copywriting is pushing buttons, but you don't know which buttons to push if you haven't had clients yet. So like, what even are you putting on the website? You don't have testimonials, right? Like, what are you putting on this website if you haven't done the thing yet? Do the thing. Get out here and do the thing. Tell people you do this thing. Talk your talk all over the internet. This is why I teach YouTube. This is why I teach YouTube. Because YouTube is where you go and tell people, I do this thing. And YouTube will help you by saying, oh, I know people who like that thing. <laughs> I talk about ease. Oh, I know people who like ease. <laughs> I talk about seed germination and plants and growing heirloom tomatoes. You know what? I know people who like dirt, right? YouTube knows stuff. It knows stuff. There's nothing like it. And so you should be using these platforms to get clients, I think, before you have a website. Unless, unless, so maybe if you, if you make and sell your own physical products, frankly, you don't even need it then right? You just need a place for people to pay you. You need a, la a landing page as opposed to a full website. Right? After that, all that stuff that you're doing is procrastination. It's not going to help you make any money. You don't have a business until you've made money. Okay. PI says, I'm too shy for a YouTube channel. I need another option. Okay. Something. Did you go to Exodus Summit? There are lots of options. <laughs> Exodus Summit is a virtual summit for black women planning to move abroad or planning a sabbatical or a career break or nomad life, right? And this year, Exodus Summit's, Exodus Summit's theme was move abroad money. And we had 20 speakers come in and talk about the different way that they, the way that they make money. And so if you go to ExodusSummit.com, which, as I told you, is not a real, it's not our website. Right? It's just a summit page. <clears throat> if you go to ExodusSummit.com, you can watch the replays from Exodus Summit 2022. And you can see what black women are out here doing to make their move abroad money. And 
learn how to do it for yourself. So the point of the summit wasn't just for you to see what people are doing, but it's for them to teach you how to get started. Every one of those sessions teaches you how to get started with that thing. I did a session, of course, on YouTube. We had sessions on teaching something online. Uh, we had a session on selling foot pics and doing phone sex. We had a session on Airbnb in your home. We had a session on real estate uh, investing without being a landlord. We had a session on taking your traditional work in the social services remote. Uh, we had a session on travelpreneurship, right? If you want to run retreats or host trips, we had a session on travelpreneurship. We had a session on freelance writing, which was exceptionally helpful to me. Uh, if you need to pitch yourself to anyone, if you need to pitch anything to anyone in the world, that session is for you, right? Session on freelance writing. Um, we had a session on trading and investing. I feel like I did a pretty good job with this one. We had a session on infopreneurship, right? Which is what I am. How to take what's, what you know, create a product or a service, sell it to people out in the world. Oh, we had a session on um, e-commerce, running an e-commerce site where you drop ship. Andy runs an e-commerce site. She lists products and serve products on her site. She doesn't make or ship a product. Drop shipping from e-commerce. <clears throat> we had a session on getting a job. We had a session on working abroad for an international company, not going abroad and getting a job. Right. But how to get a job in the U.S. with a company that's international that can take you to a different country. Right. So we talked to um, Thea, who's who works for Delta Airlines and lives in Italy. Uh huh. Right. And we talked with Ivana, who worked for Deloitte, I believe, in Belgium. One of those one Deloitte or. Yeah, I think it was Deloitte in Belgium. All right, so at ExodusSummit.com, if you're thinking, you know what, I would like some, to make some money so I can f free myself from my job, go to ExodusSummit.com, get your ticket to watch the replays. Yes, the summit is over. No, the information is not gone. The information is still there. It's still good information. Watch the replays. We had a session on negotiating three secrets to earning the salary you deserve. So if your job is a job that can take you to your dreams, right? You, maybe your job is a job that can get you to a very, very early retirement. You just need to be able to negotiate some things. Or your job can take you abroad, but you need to negotiate some stuff. Teen session on three secrets to earning the salary you deserve is also super helpful. Sometimes after I finish talking about the summit, I'm like, man, I couldn't get through any subscriptions. Thank you. But this time I felt like I did it. I still didn't do it. Thank you, Pamela. We had a session on uh, running a subscription business model. So do you know that there are people out here writing newsletters, sending newsletters out every week about their topic and people pay to get that newsletter? I pay to get a newsletter on grants for creators. Danielle, my friend Danielle, has a newsletter called Grants for Creators. I pay every month to get that newsletter. So, does a, so do a lot of other people. This is one of Danielle's money makers, right? She left her job because her Grants for Creators newsletter pays her to do, to research, do things that she loves, research grants, and share that information with people who need it. Um, our speaker's uh, newsletter is on speaking. <laughs> her, news, her newsletter is actually about, the speaker for the summit, her newsletter is actually about speaking opportunities. So people who are speakers or want to be speakers pay for her newsletter, right? It's, it's small. I think it's a small fee. I pay less than, I think, I, I don't remember what I pay for Danielle's. I don't want, I think I pay less than $5 a month, right? But it all adds up. So we had a session on the subscription business model, right? On how to, doing things for a subscription is a viable way to support yourself out in this world. Okay, yeah, and right, thank you, Nyrell. Yeah, so I talked about um, freelance writing, right? Freelance writing or writing for publication. Okay, all right, so if you're like, I don't know, I don't know what I wanna do, I wanna do something else, I don't know what else, see if any of those sound good to you. If any one of those sounds good to you, the ticket is worth the price. If two or three sound good to you, 
<laughs> you're getting a steal. <laughs> but that ticket is worth the price, even if you only wanted to learn how to do one of these things. Okay. All right. Yes, they're still available, Tanya, at ExodusSummit.com. You have to buy the replay ticket. Yes, they're still available. All right. We appreciate our speakers for, for coming in and teaching. They came in and actually taught you how to do the thing, right? And you know how sometimes you go to stuff. I went to a, I went to a, um, it wasn't really a, excuse me, it wasn't really a virtual summit, but I went to a thing this week um, on project management and I didn't learn how to do anything, <laughs> right? Uh, there were speakers talking about, not for my own business, not that I want to do project management for other people, but I need to learn how to manage my own projects, okay? Uh, and I, it's, it's through a tool, a tool that I already use, an online platform that I already use. Now, I didn't, I thought maybe there would at least be some sessions to teach me how to learn the, the platform, but I'm gonna have to learn that on my own or, or find their resources on their website. Um, but there were no, the, the sessions were so short, they broke them up into 20 minute sessions, which is weird. Uh, the sessions were so short that you couldn't get into the how. You can get into the why in 20 minutes. Here's why this is important. And then you leave feeling, like, okay, well, this is something I got to learn how to do still, right? Exodus Summit is not the kind of virtual summit where you're going to leave still not knowing how to do something. Every one of those sessions, every one of those sessions I walked away with, okay, well now I know how to, now I know how to book a, now I know how to pitch freelance writing um, gigs. They're not called gigs. Now I know how to pit, pitch myself to, to publications as a freelance writer, right? Now I know how to do it, right? Not just that I should. Now I know, oh, it's a long, it's, it's, oh, it's three days of sessions for six or seven or eight hours a day. Really, like most re most of the replays from Exodus Summit are one hour, but we did have some 90 minute sessions. Okay, so most of the sessions are one hour, but they're lots, they're tw 20 sessions, 18 sessions. Okay, all right, you're welcome. ExodusSummit.com, you're welcome. All right, we created it because we want you to be there. So yeah, we, we created it because we want you to use it, okay? If you want to join me in Costa Rica, right, and you need to free yourself from your job, it's time to get together. Get, it, get something started. Some of these women, some women from the chat probably have already made a little money from what they learned at Exodus Summit. Anybody already made some money from Exodus Summit? No. T. Bruce, do I know anyone who helps with branding? Another thing I don't have. I don't have it. The physical branding, logo. I don't have a logo. I'm t I just told y'all I'm going to make twenty five, two hundred fifty thousand dollars before the year is up. I just told y'all, okay, two hundred fifty thousand dollars before the year is up. YouTube money is a month behind, uh, but two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right. I don't have a logo. I don't have a logo. I don't have a logo. I don't branding. Brand, to me, what my, my brand is the words that I say out of my mouth, and that's on my YouTube channel, and I talk it all over the internet. I talk my talk all over the internet. That's as far as branding as you need. <laughs> I'm so serious. I don't have a logo. I just got the LLC because Rashida made me. That maybe it might be two years ago now. A year and a half. I'm going to go with a year and a half ago because it was the summertime. <clears throat> I just told y'all, I'm out, but before the year's over, $250,000 without a logo, with a website that no, I don't send anyone to, except for the, the only people, the vicarious.com slash call me, that's my website. You see, it's basura, right? If you've bought anything else from me, you've not been to my website. Actually, Vicar I may have re even rerouted vicarious.com call me just to Calendly just to keep people off the website. Because seriously, there's nothing helpful there. <laughs> oh no, that's my website. That's my website. It's not a helpful website. Uh, but you don't need those things. These things are procrastination methods, right? Okay, Crystal B already made money tutoring on Cambly. Good, Crystal, wonderful. Cambly is for t tutoring people in English, tutoring people 
English, in English, right? How to speak English. People from all over the world, Cambly, is, Cambly students are worldwide. Uh, you tutor them in English. Really, what you need to be able to do Cambly is be a native English speaker, right? Right? Talk about a fast start. You don't need to do all this extra stuff to get started. Congratulations, Crystal. I'm glad. That's right, right? So branding, as far as I'm concerned, branding are the words I say and the w words that people would say about me, right? When I say, hi, I'm Stephanie Perry, and people say, oh, Stephanie the house sitter. That's my brand. That's branding, okay? But when people ask me, how do I, what do I, do I have any tools or tips for branding? They're talking about the logo and the website and the blah and the blah and the blah. No, because you don't need it. And you can tell anybody I said it. <laughs> I said it. You don't need it. You don't need it. <clears throat> Nobody has been like, oh, I would like to become a house sitter, but she don't have a logo. <laughs> Nobody is like, oh, I would go to this virtual summit and change my life, but this isn't their website. <laughs> they don't have a website. This is just a place to buy tickets. I don't know. I don't know how we would measure how many lives we've changed. I don't know how we would measure that. Two different virtual summits, we've had more than 3,000 black women attend. This middle virtual summit has now, it, so it's after the summit, it kept selling tickets. So it is finally over 3,000. So we're over 10,000 total tickets sold to our virtual summits. But you know, some of y'all have been every year. Um, house sitter school, child. I don't know. So I don't know. And with house sitter school, I don't know who's buying house sitter school. Anybody can buy house sitter school. If you watch a YouTube video and you're interested, you can buy house sitter school. So I don't know how, how to measure how many of those students are black women. So yeah, a survey would be the answer. <laughs> so it, what I'm saying is right now, I don't know how to say right now, but I'm, I'm, I feel comfortable saying thousands. I feel comfortable saying thousands of women's lives have changed. And then this YouTube channel, I have 129,000 YouTube subscribers. Hello, YouTube subscribers. 129,000 YouTube subscribers. I'm comfortable saying I have changed thousands of women's lives. I'm comfortable with saying thousands. No website. <laughs> no branding. <laughs> I don't have it. Maybe 2023 is my year. Maybe 2023. I don't know. I just use purple and everything and it helps people understand. <laughs> right. My first, I picked pink and purple from up for vacarious.com because I had a picture of me in, with, in pink and purple and I looked cute. And so I was like, well, let me just put everything in pink and purple. So my YouTube thumbnails today are still pink and purple because of that pink and purple outfit that I wore back in 2017, right? Like that's as far into branding as I have gone. <laughs> I don't know. That tickles me. It tickles me. I can't tell you how good it feels to be, again, I don't know. I don't have a good word for it. I don't have, I'm not at the point of financial freedom, but I am at the point where I can live my dreams with, I have the money to live my dreams. And it's nice. It's nice. I think that you should too. This was just why I do things like the virtual summit and house sitter school and what is it called? The other thing and the YouTube challenges and my YouTube society, right? I do these things because you can get here or beyond, Ex you exceed this, right? You can exceed this. I do it because I don't think it's, there's nothing for me to gain from not sharing how I did it. I'm gonna share with you how I did it. How I did it was not with the website. How I did it was talking my talk all over the internet, right? Being very clear about the transformation I can help women get to, and then talking that talk all over the internet. Next is the book, and then a book stuff, more book stuff. Book, books, and more books. Books for everyone, right? So, are we asking questions about a meetup? 
I can't see the beginning question, but I see the answer. I'm assuming this is a after this is an answer to a different question. Thank you, my motivation. You've definitely changed mine. Thank you. I take credit. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I take credit. I take credit for these wins. My mom calls it stars in her crown. She's like, oh, one more star in my crown. <laughs> Ooh, I'm out of water. We got to end soon. Oh. I take credit. It feels good. It feels good to wake up and put my feet on the floor and be like, all right. I get to do something that I really enjoy for people I really love. This is good, right? For a while, in my, for, at, one of the, at the bank I worked at, I was a credit analyst, but my job was to lower credit lines and close people's accounts. <laughs> on the phone with them on the phone with them they would call in for a credit line increase i would pull their credit report and i would say actually we have to decrease your credit line we would decrease the credit line to 300 dollars above their balance so let's say they had 8500 dollars balance on their card i'm like actually i'm decreasing your credit line to 8800 dollars today i wouldn't even give them nine thousand, y'all i hated that job they called me every name those customers called me every name i'm like what I've never even heard this. <laughs> Who calls people chicken shit? Like, what? I've never even heard this before. <laughs> what? It was not a good job. I did not wake up like, oh, good. I get to go to work today. I get to do this today. It was not good. It did not feel good. So now I get to do stuff that I like, and I get to take all the credit for it. <laughs> and I get to help you, and I get to take all the credit for that, too. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here every day. Yeah, right? I hope that what you take away is that I am not exceptional. I hope that that's what you take away. I share money numbers. I know some people get really tensed up when you start talking about money, but it's just money. It's not even real. <laughs> it's not even real. <laughs> right? Look at your Vanguard statement. Does that look like real money to you? My little Vanguard statement for the year is like, boop. I'm like, this ain't even real. <laughs> this ain't even real. All right. So Rashida says that it's only okay to tell you this much. We are hoping to get together with you in the spring. We are hoping to get together with you April 20th, even through the 25th. And we are hoping that that will be in Marrakesh, Morocco. We don't know. Okay, we don't know. If you book your flight today and it doesn't happen, I told you, we don't know. Okay, we are hoping that April 20th through the 25th, we will be together in Marrakesh, Morocco, enjoying like opulence <laughs> and spa things. Really, Morocco is a, uh, when I think of going to Marrakesh, I think of shopping. I would love to go buy some rugs and stuff. I think of tea. I think of spas, um, yeah. So I don't know. The answer is I don't know. I don't know. But this is what we're we'll be working on in the next few weeks, soon in the next soon soon, right? So what you should do if you think you would love to hang out with the Exodus Summit women. We need to put together, if you go to the Exodus Summit Instagram, you'll see some stuff from our last meetup. If you don't know yet, if you would want to hang out with us, uh, it's going to make you want to hang out with us. Okay. So I would go to the Exodus Summit Instagram. Okay. And look at Cancun. Uh, if you think you'd like to go, I would say clear off that end of April <laughs> from your calendar and I would say, move some money around or whatever, get your, get your feet picks up on the internet, do what you need to do so that Morocco 2023, April is viable, is possible. All right, if you also wanna dip around, some of y'all are interested in bopping to Portugal from there, very inexpensive flights to Portugal and Spain from Marrakesh, or maybe the reverse. Anyway, it's very inexpensive to make those two trips together. Right. If you're a person who wants to do some scouting somewhere in Europe, Europe to Morocco. If you're OK with a budget airline, you could probably do it for 100. I don't know. Times have changed. There was a time when you could go from Portugal to Morocco for one hundred dollars. 
right? If you don't mind flying Ryanair. Now, who knows what airline prices are? I don't know. Like we said, money is not real. Money is not real. They just be making stuff up. So I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've never been to Marrakesh. I'm going to tell you, Marrakesh is a place that I would never go alone. So I want y'all to come with me. <laughs> I'm not, I would never go there alone as a black woman. It seems a little harassy. <laughs> That's why I would like y'all to come with me. Uh, hopefully we'll have a tour guide or something again, or some multiple tour guides. Nothing is done. Nothing is done. Nothing is solid. Nothing is done. Okay. This is just what we're hoping to do, but we, it's the kind of trip where we need to tell you in advance because, uh, you're going to need days like flying to Cancun from Atlanta, right? That's, I don't even know if that was three hours, but flying to Morocco from Atlanta, from New York, from Cali. Some of y'all Cali girls are going to show up. Uh, y'all need to do some preparing. We're going to have some better information for you as soon as we can. We just don't have any right now. Okay. But remember, this is what we want to happen. This is not what we're saying is happening. So Keep, stay posted. Um, there is a web, another landing page, right? Not the website, but there is another landing page where you can get yourself on the waiting list to make sure that um, you don't miss the announcement just in case, right? I think it is exodussummit.com slash meetup. Yeah. Nope, it's not meetup. What would it be? <laughs> Exodus Summit. Dot com. Okay, so let me go into the expo and find it. So we have an expo at exodusummit.com slash expo. So I have to go to the expo and then find the meetup by getting clicking this button. Oh, it's a subscribe page. Okay. Subscribepage.com slash exodus meetup. I need to make a redirect for that. Where are y'all? Let me find y'all again. Okay, wait list. <clears throat> Exodus meetup wait list blank bank. Okay, so if you want to make sure you hear about it as soon as we know about it, get on the wait list. Okay, you'll get the email. Then you need to open the email, right? That's all you have to do after that. Open the email. Okay. But hopefully soon before this, I think before the end of this month, then that'll give you December, January, February, March, and part of April, five months. Okay. Okay. All right. And then, cause like we got to keep, so COVID, it's hard to plan things during COVID. Every time COVID is like, I'm back or I, not really I'm back, but like, oh, I ain't going nowhere. But I'll, I, I, there's a decent chance that this will be the, the plan. April 20. Through 25, Marrakesh, decent chance. How's that? Is that okay? Should we hit, okay? Okay. <laughs> we had a thing in the survey. We had a survey after the summit and we asked which one would you prefer? Morocco didn't win, but Rashida and I have, <laughs> Rashida and I have the final say. Uh, I can't remember who won. Actually, I really don't remember who won. I, it might have won by now. I need to go back and look at an updated version of the survey and look at the updated results. Yes, <laughs> harassing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think of when I think of Marrakesh. Beautiful, good shopping. I think even good food. I think of good food because there's some French influence in any place that has had French influence. They eat. Uh, but yes, it seems harassy. We're going to need a tour guide or two or four or eight. Yeah, we're going to need some tour guides on this one. All right. Okay. Yes. Right. So y'all agree? I think it would be a wonderful place, though, for us to be there together and experience it and do spa things and stay in a place that's beautiful and enjoy it. I think so. I hope so. Okay. All right. Now we're really out of questions, three hours in. Travel with Stacy says visit Fez too. Okay. I would really like to get some stuff made and get some rugs, a rug or two. Bring them back to Costa Rica. I think it'll be, I think it'll be an amazing trip. Amazing time. Uh, Lalanda, Lalanda, L the lovely Lalanda, 
Her so her pictures in Morocco had me like, okay, I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> was it Lalanda? I met her in um she must not be the lovely Lalanda on here. I met her in San Miguel de Allende. Mm -mm, destination Ulala. Destination Ulala on Instagram. I was like, okay, I'm going there. And she's been to Egypt recently. Okay. Y'all, okay, I'm just hanging out with y'all. Okay, I gotta go, I gotta go. Okay, very nice. I don't really have to go, but I figure I should go. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't have to go. I have a little free time. Okay, good. All right, so get yourselves on the wait list and we'll holler at you. If you're already in Europe, um, okay, hi, CB, good. If you're already in Europe, this is not an expensive or time-consuming trip. It's just a little bloop. But for us in the US, this is a bop especially if you're in the Midwest. If you're on the East Coast, it's really not all that far either. But if you're on the bop, I mean, if you're on the Midwest, West Coast, it's a bop, okay? But I think it'll be worth it. I, what I think in Cancun was that the women who did the spa stuff had the, had the best experience. And so I'd like to go to a place where a spa is the thing, right? <laughs> Kathy, are you still here? Hey, Kathy. Kathy went to that spot. I saw her standing by the elevator just like. <laughs> so I would like us to do something very spa centric. So I think it's a good choice. New dating for all tastes. Get out of here. Ban. Ban. Yeah, I think it's a good choice. Hi, MT. As a veteran, how do I feel about using veteran's disability income to move overseas? I wish I had enough to move overseas on it. I only have 10% disability. We talk $150 a month. If you have, yes, it's money. It's guaranteed money. Yes, take it, take it with you. Uh, so there's no real concern about getting access to your money in another country. You wanna use, you know, you use a bank just like anywhere else. So if, am I missing your question? Use it. Do it. It's guaranteed money. Guaranteed money that's only going to increase. <laughs> My little $150 a month, it's, the, it's guaranteed money. So uh, use it to your advantage. Yes. What are you saying? Yeah. What am I missing, MT? What is your concern? Uh, Cause my I don't go for it. It's it, guaranteed money. If you don't need a job, cause some listen. Some of y'all. Okay, so I, I I joke about alimony. How I miss the boat on alimony. I don't feel bad about missing the boat on the veteran, the VA money. But some of y'all are not utilizing it to its full potential. My my girlfriends with alimony understand. <laughs> how life-changing alimony can be <laughs> but some of y'all with this veterans money this uh retirement money and the va money i don't think you know how much money you're you have what you need to do is just look at where you are if you're getting if you're getting 100 percent disability that's probably i don't know 100 percent disability people out here getting four and five thousand dollars a month right i don't know in the where in the world you can't go like seriously I don't know where in the world you can't go. Live. Yes, do it. Getting the money. Oh, banks. Oh, no. It's Banks are banks, and there are banks everywhere. I would get a bank that uh, I would start in the U.S. Get yourself a bank that does not charge foreign transaction fees. And then when you get where you're going, you open up a bank account there. And then you figure out, okay, so there is a step where you need to transfer the money. So it's going to be deposited into your U.S. bank and you need to transfer it to into your, for example, your Costa Rican bank. If I were to open a bank account here, I would need to find a, the way to transfer the money from that bank to this bank. Now, I, I use TransferWise, but I've been told not to use them. Halisi, was it Halisi just last week said don't use TransferWise for everything? So yeah, it's just a step. It's just an extra step. You're going to need to be able to feel comfortable moving money from one bank to another right from one country to another i use transfer wise to do it 
Uh, and I got no problems. Um, but Halisi said not them. Adelia most likely has a video on this, right? Adelia, who is Peaky Girl Travels the World, most likely on her YouTube channel, she has a video on get accessing her U.S. money while she lives in Mexico. Actually, I don't know. I don't think she got a Mexican bank account. I'm right. Picky Girl Travels to Mexico. I type Picky Girl Travels to Mexico. Actually, I don't think Adelia has a Mexican bank account. I'm, what I'm saying to you, MT, is it's no big deal. NBD, no big deal. It's just not something that I have expertise with because I only use my U.S. bank account right now. I, my money is in, in USAA today. And when I went to the grocery store, I stuck my USA my USAA debit card in and paid for my groceries. And when I needed cash, I went to the ATM, stuck my USAA debit card in and paid for my groceries. But if you're going to live somewhere, you probably should get an account in that country. Okay, so use your card from the U.S. as long as you're not getting foreign transaction fees, as long as you're not being charged foreign transaction fees. Yes, TransferWise is called WISE now. Yes. <laughs> hey, Aspen Sierra. All of it, girl. All of it. I showed some nice pictures. I saw, showed some pictures of my sabbatical, the 12 months in Southeast Asia and Australia and Europe. So go back and you'll want to you'll want to see them, especially in the mostly in the beginning. <laughs> USA does not charge me foreign transaction fees, but Navy Federal does. That's what I've been told. I have USA only, USAA only no foreign transaction fees and they refund me ATM fees. But I've been told Navy, Navy Federal Credit Union does charge foreign transaction fees. You're welcome. Yeah, getting access to the money, no big deal. It's, it's no big deal. Something you can easily navigate. Yeah. If you have somebody who's paying you money every month, <laughs> quit your job <laughs> and get somewhere. Get somewhere. See if you like it. If you don't like that, get somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> that, yes, that's what I, I have a lot of girlfriends or a lot of friends who are retired military. Uh, Cause I was in so long ago, long enough ago that they're now retiring. Hello friends. If you're here, um, I think that some of them are a little unsure about how much money that is. It's good money. Okay. That retirement plus disability money. That's good money. It'll take you around the world. Don't worry. I know people, it's a little scary, I think, because they've not really lived on the economy. Some of them have never lived on the economy. They've only lived through the government. And so they don't understand how much money they're getting. Right. But I, I've seen some four and five thousand dollar per month payouts on people who are functioning well. I'm sure there's some six and seven and eight thousand dollar per month payouts. You can be anywhere, anywhere. Pick a place. <laughs> Pick a place. <laughs> okay. For the 18th time, I'm done. All right. Thank you so much for hanging out, for being so good to each other in the chat, for being so kind to me as always. All right. I hope you take some time today and extend some kindness, some grace to yourself and take a step towards that life of your dreams. Okay. Don't have me out here alone. <laughs> don't have me out here living my dream by myself okay take a step towards that life of your dreams and at one step today one step today all right okay i'll see you guys very soon i see you sharing information in the chat so i'm gonna let the chat roll for just for another second but i see you guys okay for real this time i said it last time but i mean it this time i got to go okay <laughs> i got to go guys all right thank you for hanging out i'll see you soon Bye.